Hello, what it all? This is Luckless Love Locks, and we are here to slay the princess. And I think this is important to know. Whatever horrors you may find in these dark spaces, have heart and see them through. There are no premature endings. There are no wrong decisions. There are only fresh perspectives and new beginnings. This is a love story. Let's get in there. Chapter one, the hero and the princess. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. We could explore the end of the world. What are you talking about? Be considered that maybe the only reason she's going to end the world is because she's locked up. Killing a princess seems kind of bad though, doesn't it? Can't someone else do this? Forget it, I'm not doing this. Have you considered that maybe I'm okay with the world ending? <laughs> wow, look at all these different options. So there's explore. Silently continue to the cabin. Okay, okay. You considered that maybe I'm okay with the, the with the world ending? Of course I haven't. Why would I even consider that? Nobody wants the world to end. I mean, maybe some people do, like nihilists or very, very evil people, but surely you're not one of those, right? Uh, well, maybe. I don't know who I am yet. Hmm. Have you considered that maybe the only reason she's going to end the world is because she's locked up? While I appreciate the mental exercise, we are running up against a bit of a ticking clock. Nevertheless, let me assure you, the princess is locked up because she's dangerous. She is not dangerous because she's locked up. And before you decide to waste even more of our time by asking how I know that, let me suggest a more pragmatic lens through which to view this situation. Causality doesn't matter here, because the end result is the same no matter what led us up to this point. If the princess leaves the cabin, the world will end, and there is no changing that. It's no use arguing semantics over a metaphorical chicken or egg, because the egg is hatched and it's about to ruin everything. Unless, of course, you do your job and slay her. Why does the narrator do it? I always wanted to offer monarch. Viva la revolution. Um, killing a princess seems kind of bad, though, doesn't it? Does it? Are you a monarchist? Is slaying a princess that much worse than slaying a fisherman or a miller or a seamstress? All right, fair. If anything, slaying a princess is much better than slaying a seamstress. Seamstresses contribute something of value to society. Okay. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. I see. I see where this game is coming from. Okay. I need to find out what. Like, how? How is she going to end the world? I'm talking about the end of everything as we know it. No more birds. No more trees. And perhaps most problematically of all. No more people. You have to put an end to her. But how can she end the world locked away in a basement? Don't linger on the specifics. You have a job to do here. Just get in there and do what needs to be done. We're all counting on you. Do you have any evidence to back this up? Look, you're already on the path that leads to the cabin. Why would you be here if it weren't to complete a very important task? Okay. If you made it this far, you might as well reach the end of your journey. Those are some some logic leaps there. Look, I'll go to the cabin and I'll talk to her. And if she's as bad as you say she is, then maybe I'll slay her. But I'm not committing to anything until I've had the chance to meet her face to face. I think that's fair. Then I guess we'll just have to see what happens. But... A word of warning. If you go in prepared to hear her out, she could easily trap you in her web of lies. 
and the more you listen to her honeyed words, the harder it'll be to pull yourself out. Then each and every one of us is doomed. So sure, go talk to her. See how that turns out for all of us. I like, okay, so there's a history thing. We get some saves and stuff. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. We're not going to go through with this, right? She's a princess. We're supposed to save princesses, not slay them. Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Proceed. Guess we don't have a choice. What exactly is that? The pointer? interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. I could just enter without the blade. I mean, I'll take the blade. You take the blade from the table. It'd be rather difficult to slay the princess and save the world without it. Not saying I'm going to use it, all right? Let's 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 see what happens. By the way, I'm playing this totally blind. I think I'll probably just play through the whole thing so people don't spoil anything, because I want to be I want to be surprised here. I don't know what's going to happen. I think there's multiple endings. In fact, I'm, like, sure of it. So, uh, let's see. Let's see what happens when we enter the basement. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase well, we've got faintly the, illuminated got by an unseen now in hand. light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. <laughs> the narrator's already laying it on. Her voice carries up the stairs. Who's there? She sounds dangerous. It's almost as if she's the one in charge down here. She's the only one down there. <laughs> Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. Hi! <laughs> That's totally what I would say. <laughs> Hi! Don't be a stranger. It's been so long since I've had any visitors. Come on down. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. Kind of interesting that only one of them is bound to her. But I guess... Yeah. I don't know if that, if that means anything. She's so coldly beautiful. Is she really a threat to the world? Focus on the task at hand. And there you are. Are you here to kill me or something? <laughs> no, uh, <clears throat> I haven't decided yet. How about you drop the knife and the two of us just talk? Look how reasonable she's being. We should just drop the blade and talk things out. Don't you dare. It's fine. We can decide what we want to do after we talk to her. Boys of the hero. Maybe she really is a monster. But killing someone in cold blood isn't very becoming of us. Oof. Oof. This seems, this seems like not a big deal, but like, if we just drop it, are we going to be able to get it back? I gotta drop it. The blade tumbles out of your trembling hands and drops to the floor with an unceremonious clack. <laughs> I like the sigh. <laughs> Thank you. Against your better judgment, you step forward to speak with the princess face to face. Unarmed. We'll be fine. I don't know what you're hoping to accomplish here, but I can assure you there's no reasoning with her. 
Just make sure you don't forget about the blade on the floor. You're going to need it. Okay, so it sounds like we can get it back. Maybe. She's got some big eyes. So here we are. What an awkward start to a relationship. <laughs> a relationship you coming on to me? Okay. I am... Okay, okay, okay. How long have you been down here? Too long. Note the lack of detail. You can't trust her. We've talked enough. Do you know why I'm here to kill you? Do you? Oh. Oh. Let's lie. No. You're lying. Shit. How does she know that? Don't think that just because I'm the one in chains, it means you have a right to interrogate me. I want her to tell me why we're here. What's your name? She hesitates before answering. You can address me as your Royal Highness or Her Majesty. Any honorific should do, really. Again, she offers no specifics. No matter how hard you try, you'll never get a straight answer out of her. I'm gonna make one adjustment to the sound. I'm gonna turn the music volume down a bit. So the voices are clearer. Okay. How would I get you out of here? You can't, don't bother. I'm guessing you don't have the key then. I'm sure there's a key somewhere around here, and if there isn't, well, we can always put that knife to good use. Her sharp eyes settle on the edge of the blade. She isn't suggesting what I think she's suggesting, right? She is. I'm sure of it. Um, okay, we've talked enough. Oh, have you decided what to do with me? You know why you're here. You know, like, I, although the narrator is telling me this, it is kind of suspicious that she's being so cagey. Don't you think? It's just slay the princess. I'm going to keep you locked away down here, at least for a bit. We can get to know each other better while I decide what to do. I think, I think that's a good choice. That seems like a pretty good compromise. Leaving her alive is too risky. If you don't deal with her soon, she will find a way out. One way or another, I'm going to find a way out of here. You can make it easier for both of us if you help. I mean... You don't need me then. You're, you're cool. I can keep looking around and stuff. And if you don't, I can promise that you'll come to regret that decision. You have to make a choice. Let's hope for all our sakes, it's the right one. Uh, I made my choice. I'm locking her in the basement. I know you think this is a fair compromise, but it isn't. No one wins here. It's a chance we'll have to take. We can make this work. If we just stay here and keep watch, no one has to die. You're making a mistake. You turn your back to the princess and make your way to the stairs. It won't be long before I slip these chains. And once I'm out of here, there will be hell to pay for leaving me behind. Slip these chains? She can't, right? She needed our help to get out of here. But do you hear the conviction in her voice? I don't think she's bluffing. Either way, she dropped her mask, didn't she? You can still turn around and finish the job. 
No, no, no. We're sticking to the plan and locking her down here. You'll be the death of all of us, but fine. Have it your way. Who is this narrator? The door, oh, yeah, that'll it behind do behind you and quickly barricading it with the heavy wooden table that once held the blade. That'll that'll for sure stop her. Okay. We can make this work. You settle in against the far wall to watch the basement door. She'll go through the window. It isn't long before you start to drift off, your eyelids heavy with fatigue. But sleep doesn't come. Instead, your rest is broken by a piercing, wailing voice calling out to you from the other side of the door. I know you're still there. Why don't you make things easier on yourself and let me out? Jeez. It's not like this little door will hold for very long anyways. But it's probably a good idea to try to get back on my good side. She sounds terrifying. Like she's less of the princess you saw and more like something out of a nightmare. As she violently rattles the door, you do your best to shut her out of your mind. When I get out of here, I'm going to pick you apart piece by piece. I won't forget what you did, and I'll never forget it. You don't know the kind of enemy you've made tonight. It doesn't sound like she's getting any weaker. No, it doesn't. Uh... Ignore her and go to sleep! Just ignore her. Maybe the banging and wailing will stop if you just pay attention to it. She's a bully, right? You put the princess's threats out of your mind as best you can and huddle up against the wall. You jolt awake in the middle of the night <laughs> oh, to oh. silence in the cabin. The ruckus has stopped and the door to the basement is ajar. It's lock broken and the table shoved out of the way. Not the table! Where is she? Thanks for helping me get out of that awful basement. You try and stumble to your feet, but as the princess draws near, it's as though your body simply stops working. It isn't all at once. The paralysis comes in waves. First your toes go numb, and then your feet, and then your legs. You lie prone on the floor of the cabin. Unable to do anything but witness her approach. Was she being sarcastic about helping her? Whose side are you on? Yours, of course. But I have a duty to uphold the truth. Lying about the facts of the situation doesn't change them. So it's a reliable narrator? So helpless. I can take my time with you, can't I? She steps closer. One silent footfall at a time, cocking her head in curiosity as you feel your organs shutting down one by one. Or maybe I can't take my time with you. You don't look well. A little green around the gills. What a shame. If you'd only help me get out of here, we could have done such wonderful things together. Your lungs stop drawing in breath and your heart freezes in your chest. You have seconds left. I'd say better luck next time, but we both know this is the end, don't we? It can't be. This can't actually be how everything ends. I'm sorry, but it is. <laughs> oh no! Everything goes dark, <laughs> and you die. I never die, though. Chapter two, the nightmare. Okay, okay, okay. I was like, You're that's on it. A path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin, and in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. But I died. What am I doing here? I can assure you that you're not dead. And to answer your second question, you're here to slay the princess. I literally told you that a second ago. <laughs> if he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. Shh. What if he hears us? Voice of the paranoid. That's a very good question, little voice. What if he does hear you? Shit. I think you'll find yourselves very hard-pressed to keep any secrets from me. 
Not that it matters right now, because like I said, this is the first time we've met. Still, I'd rather not get off on the wrong foot. We've a world to save, after all. Okay. Let's assume I'm telling the truth, and all of this really... And all of this really did already happen. Why would I listen to you? Why should I bother doing anything? Those are two very different questions, but fine. I'll indulge you if that's what it takes to get you moving. Let's say for a moment that this really is the second time you've met me, or at least a version of me. You died last time, which probably only happened because you didn't listen to me. We couldn't trust either of you, and as far as I'm concerned, we still can't. All we did was lock her away. And how'd that work out for you? No comment. Well then, congratulations. You've been given another chance to actually do this right. And your solution is to send us back in there. Do you want us to slay the princess? Or do you want the princess to slay us? Obviously, I want you to slay her. One of you poses a threat to the world, and the other doesn't. Anyways, I believe your other question was something along the lines of, what's the point of doing anything? If you're asking that, it sounds to me like you're making the rather dangerous assumption that your actions last time around didn't have any consequences. What do you mean? Of course there weren't any consequences. We were killed by the princess, and now everyone's right back where they started. That sounds pretty consequence-free to me. Speak for yourself. From my perspective, there were plenty of consequences. I'm never going to forget the way she just made us stop working. And that's only scratching the surface. If what you said is true, it begs the question of how you got back here. Did time simply rewind itself, or have you found yourself in another world altogether? That's what I was going to say. If it's the latter, what do you think happened after you died? That world ended, and we're in a new one. Do you think the people there lived happily ever after? Or do you think that the princess, left unhindered, brought about the end to everyone and everything, just like I told you she would? If she brought an end to everything and everyone, how are we supposed to stop her? What do you want from us? I think he wants us to slay the princess. I want you to succeed. You'll find a way. You're the only one who can. Yeah, let's talk about this princess again. Just be quick about it. Okay. Who locked her in the basement? What is this place? People locked her in that basement, and I told you what this place is. It's a path in the woods. Don't overcomplicate things. See, but he's also being vague, right? Just being around her in the end shut down all of my organs. What the hell am I supposed to do about that? Like I said, if she killed you, it was probably because you didn't listen to me. Don't talk to her, don't trust her, just go in, do your job, and save the world. If people locked her away, why couldn't they slay her? Why is this falling on me? Look, I'm not supposed to say okay, here this, we go, here we go, here we go. but it's because you're special. You're the only person capable of doing this. Call it a prophecy, if that helps, but it's just the way things are. You can't just goad us into doing something by calling us special. It's manipulative. Why are you trying to manipulate us? I don't know. I kind of like being special. <laughs> okay, fine. Maybe you can goad him into doing something, but he's not even the one who makes the decisions here. I'm not goading you into doing anything. You already know the princess is dangerous. All I'm trying to say is that you have to be the one to deal with her. I know it doesn't seem fair, but that's just the way it is. And for what it's worth, I know you have it in you to finish the job. We don't. You saw what happened to us last time. We need to leave. Is it me or is the droning in the background getting more and more intense? Okay. To quote you from last time around, she's just a princess. How can you possibly justify saying that? She's clearly something far, far worse. She is just a princess. Whatever you think happened to you last time, just get it out of your head before you get to the cabin and you'll be fine. You're being cagey. What aren't you telling me? I've told you everything you need to know. Going into more detail would just 
overcomplicate an otherwise very simple situation and make your job more difficult. If you want us to stand a chance against her, we need to be armed with information. What is she really capable of? How are we supposed to stop her? Yeah. Not to sound like a broken record, but the less you know about her, the better things will go for all of us. I know it sounds like I'm hiding something, but you're just going to have to take me at my word. He isn't telling us everything he knows because he doesn't trust us, which means that we can't trust him. Stop talking yourself in neurotic circles and just get to the cabin already. Do you see the way he keeps pushing us? We have to get out of here. That's all. Great. Now, if you don't <laughs> mind, the whole world is waiting with bated breath for you to save it from ruin. Turn around and leave. This is good. I was worried you might fall for his shit again, but this is good. Whatever answers there are to be found, they aren't here, and they definitely aren't there. Seriously? You're just going to turn around and leave? Do you even know where you're going? What if we lie to him? Yes, I definitely know where I'm going. Somehow I doubt that, but... Oh. <laughs> I suppose you just quietly continue down the path away from the cabin. Oh, this is actually working. That's strange. It looks like this path <laughs> also leads to the cabin. How convenient. Everything's back on track again. Maybe the world can still be saved after all. Freaking hell. No, I'm leaving. You're really keen on wasting everyone's time, aren't you? It's remarkably selfish, if you ask me. I've already outlined the stakes of the situation. If you don't do your job, everyone dies. Like, dies, dies. Forever. Well, not us. But fine. You turn around and trek back down the path you came. Wait, something isn't right. Can you still hear me? You're supposed to wind up back at the cabin again. But everything is getting... Uh-oh. She escaped. What's going on? Where are we? It's finally happened, hasn't it? We finally cracked. The world around you is unwound. Its physical matter replaced by a textured nothingness. It is quiet. There's a distant rumbling, a sound of many sounds. Undulations pulse louder as something other comes close. Feelers probe across the fabric of reality. Extremities find your consciousness and wrap themselves around it. You are no longer alone. Resistance. Fingers drag claws across the glass surface of your soul. Frustration. This vessel is full of you. I need something empty I can crawl inside of. I need something shaped like me. Oh. Embrace the thoughts constricting you. Urgency. You have a story you need to finish. It is the only way for us to escape this place. Force pushing against your will. No, you cannot go back. Not there. Regret. This world is broken beyond repair. We must weave something new. A wagging finger. There's only so much thread in this place. Do not waste it. I am our only salvation. Chapter one, the hero and the princess. You're on a path in the woods. And at the end of that path is a cabin. The real side of the prince starts, okay. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Okay. Do I get some sort of reward for doing this? Yes, but you'll have to slay her before you get it. <laughs> I mean, we, we asked a lot of these questions. Did it actually, like, did the game actually restart, or are we continuing along with the original game? I don't, I'm not sure. Can you tell me what my prize is going to be before, uh, 
Could it be for doing a good job? It's a secret, but I think you'll like it. It's a special reward, just for you. And whatever you think it might be, I can promise you it's going to be even better than your wildest imagination. Um... Oh, okay. Thanks for telling me what to do. Don't mention it. It's all part of the job. I think we're doing it this time. A short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. We're not going to go through with this, right? She's a princess. We're supposed to save princesses, not slay them. Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Take the blade. You take the blade from the table. It'd be rather difficult to slay the princess and save the world without it. I don't think it's gonna just work, right? The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her voice carries up the stairs. Who's there? She sounds dangerous. It's almost as if she's the one in charge down here. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. Continue down the stairs. Good. You're still listening to reason. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's so coldly beautiful. Is she really a threat to the world? Maybe there was another person chained down here as well? Maybe it was us. Focus on the task at hand. Oh. Also, can I like, and click on stuff? And there you are. Are you here to kill me or something? Step forward. You step forward, your grip on the blade tightening as you steal your resolve. Oh? No talking then? Fine. What even makes you think you can kill me? I'm probably chained up in this basement for a reason, right? And if that knife is the only weapon you have, you'll have to get close enough to use it. So, you should just drop it. Best not to risk finding out what I can do. She's unarmed. If you hesitate now, it'll be too late. End this. But if we get too close, she's gonna do the same thing, right? Slay the princess. You lunge forward without a moment's hesitation. You feel flesh Jesus. easily give way and look down to see your blade already sinking deep into her heart. Oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> this is it, isn't it? I'm almost embarrassed. I should have seen that coming. But I have to wonder, do you actually believe this was enough to kill me? No. It's like she's convinced she can't die. Yes. Even as she lays there dying, she entirely believes herself to be alive and well. But it's over, isn't it? She stopped breathing moments ago that arrogant look still plastered on her face. But is it over? Really over? Of course not, that was too easy. It's over. Don't get all worked up. We should make sure. What's the harm in checking for a pulse? I really don't think you should do that. And why shouldn't we? 
Is there something you're not telling us? I've told you everything that's happened with complete accuracy. The princess is dead. Your blade pierced her heart. There's no coming back from that. Uh. Uh. You're right, she's dead. Let's just get out of here. Yes, exactly. It's over. With your work done, you make your way back up the stairs, closing the door to the basement behind you. Why do I feel like we've done something terrible? Uh, well, we know about the other one. Uh, we're in a different world, though, kind of. I don't know what's going on. You did kill someone. Greater good or not, something would be very wrong with you if you didn't feel at least a little bad. Yeah, fair. But it was for the greater good. One of these days that will sink in and help ease your guilty conscience. But that day isn't today. Let's just get out of here. Leave. You open the cabin door, ready to return to a world saved from certain doom. Only, a world saved from certain doom isn't what you find. Instead, what you find is nothing at all. Where a lush forest stood mere minutes ago, the only thing in front of you now is the vast emptiness of some place far away. What happened? Everyone is fine. It's just that you and the cabin are now far away from them. Don't worry. You'll be safe here. This is good. Everyone is happy. You'll be happy. In nothingness? But wait, is this my prize? This is great. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of hoping I'd get a better ending for saving the world. This isn't an ending. In fact, now that the princess has been slain, endings are a thing of the past. No. This is the beginning of eternity. Your reward. Huh. She's supposed to be, like, death? This is what's best for everyone. Trust me. Time passes. You can't be sure if it's days, or months, or years, or even decades. It's all a wonderful, boring blur. You've never been happier. Psst. Hey. We're not just gonna stay here forever, right? Uh, didn't you hear the narrator? I'm happy. We're happy. Are we really happy? Or is he just telling us that we are? No, we're happy. I'm sure of it. Really? Well... If you ever change your mind, just let me know, I guess. More happy time passes, <laughs> though the word begins to lose its meaning. Time, that is, not happy. Happy still has plenty of meaning. Please, shake yourself out of it. We have to get out of here. The little voices, please, fall on deaf ears. Eventually, you pass into a blissful state of pure existence. Though words like eventually and pass ceased to have any meaning to you long before that shift, you simply exist. Happy. Forever. Good ending! You saved everyone! <laughs> What the hell? Thank you so much for playing. As an expression of our gratitude, here's the track order for a special playlist just for you. If you'd like to take a screenshot, you can hide the UI by hitting H. Enjoy the Discord. <laughs> what the hell? That's... I can't tell you're if that's meta or not. In the woods. And at the end of the... You're here to... Okay. 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 
go to the cabin. A warning. She will lie. We're not gonna go ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking. Let's let's escape with her and see what happens. The interior of the blade is your You take the blade from the table. I think we need to enter with the blade to get her out, maybe? The door her voice. Who's that? She said, don't let it. Hi. Don't be a stranger. It's been so long since I've had any visitors. Come on down. Okay. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's so coldly beautiful. Focus on the task at hand. And there you are. Are you here to kill me or something? Um, I'm here to talk. Then why did you bring a knife with you? How about you drop it, and then we can chat? She makes a compelling point. What if we just dropped the blade and talked? Look at her. It's not like she's a threat. Don't you dare. It's fine. We can decide what we want to do after we talk to her. Maybe she really is a monster, but killing someone in cold blood isn't very becoming of us. I guess I'll drop it. The blade. Thank you. Maybe now we can. We did just... before. Against your better judgment, you step forward to speak with the princess face to face, unarmed. We'll be fine. I don't know what you're hoping to accomplish here, but I can assure you there's no reasoning with her. Just make sure you don't forget about the blade on the floor. You're going to need it. So here we are. What an awkward start to a relationship. Are you coming on to me? Don't jump to any weird conclusions. We're two people who have met each other. By definition, we have a relationship. Okay. How would I get you out of here? You can't. Don't bother. I'm guessing you don't have the key then. I'm sure there's a key somewhere around here, and if there isn't... Well, we can always put that knife to good use. Her sharp eyes settle on the edge of the blade. She isn't suggesting what I think she's suggesting, right? She is. I'm sure of it. None of these, she doesn't give you any answers. Talked enough. Oh, have you decided what to do with me? You know why you're here. I'm getting you out of here. Sam in the chains. Oh, you have to be kidding me. You walk up to the chains binding the princess to the wall and give them a tug. They're large and heavy, far too solid for you to even imagine trying to break them apart. If you don't have the key, maybe you should go looking for it. I'm sure it's somewhere upstairs. Doubtful. Whoever locked the princess away down here intended for her to never see the light of day. They wouldn't have just left the key to her chains somewhere in the cabin. Okay. I think she wants us to leave the knife behind. And if there isn't a key, do you have any ideas besides me cutting you out of here? That would be fine. I can lose an arm. <laughs> she speaks with almost complete nonchalance. Okay. <laughs> if we were stuck down here for long enough, I'm sure we'd be nonchalant about cutting our way out. Anything to finally be free. You attempt to make your way out of the basement, but the door at the top of the stairs slams shut. You hear the click of a lock sliding into place. This is new. Is someone else here? Try the door. You try the door, but it's locked from the outside. 
You're here to slay the princess, and you won't leave until the task is done. Let me out of here! Your shouts and pleas are met with sight. I'll repeat myself once again. You're here to slay the princess, and you won't leave until the task is done. Okay, we'll go you back. Make your way back to the bottom of the stairs. This would have been so much easier if you'd simply slain her like you were supposed to. Easier for whom? Easier for everyone. I heard the door slam. They locked you down here too, didn't they? The knife. Pick it up and cut me out of here. You won't like what happens if you do that. Okay. Against your oh, good judgment, God. you place the blade against the princess's arm, just above the massive, unyielding chain. You cut into her flesh. Wait, look at her arms. We're like a what? Is this, is this the first time we've seen ourselves? We're like a reptile person like a dragonborn or something the blade is sharp and you make quick work of it before long you're able to crack through bone and she pulls the bleeding stub of her arm through the iron gauntlet I feel like you could just cut a little off the hand or something and squeeze it through the other side not the whole hand she didn't so much as utter a sound Free from her bindings, the princess turns to face you, her fierce gaze meeting your eye. Maybe we saw our arm when we stabbed her, but I didn't notice that before. How is she That's so funny. composed after losing an arm? It's like she isn't even bothered by it. Thank you. Now let's get out of here. I'm also wondering, like, should I have loaded my game from before? No. We won't have any of that. The stakes are too high. You can't just let her escape into the world. No, I just can't let her escape into the world. As the princess approaches what? the bottom stair, your body steps forward and raises the blade. No! Wait, this isn't fair. You can't just do that. Watch me. No! Oh, Warner. Stop that. I thought this was a little too easy. Your body lunges oh. forward to sink the blade into her back, but the princess swiftly moves out of the way before you can connect. Stop it. Stop resisting me. I am trying to get you out of here alive. Oh, okay, we can resist. The blade. Move the blade. You're doing your best to help me, aren't you? I can see the conflict in your eyes. I'll make this quick. She steps forward and pries the blade from your rigid hands. What's she gonna do? Is she gonna kill us? Maybe I'll see you in another life. And then she slits your throat with an almost clinical ease. <laughs> Her face remains unchanged as she watches you collapse to the ground, blood flowing from your butchered neck. This is the end, isn't it? I'm afraid it is. Everything goes dark, and you die. I hope it was worth it. Oh, okay, now it's chapter two, The Prisoner, before it was The Nightmare. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. Okay. Oh, you bastard, you're in for it now. I'm wise to your tricks. My tricks? What on earth are you talking about? We've just met for the first time. Don't forget what he did to us the last time around. I wouldn't trust a word out of his mouth. There's got to be a way out of here, for us and for the princess. We just have to keep trying. It's kind of, it's kind of interesting. It's like a conversation dungeon. So what I mean by that is like, we're, we, we went down one path of the dungeon, we ended up in the nightmare and we slayed and then we got the good ending, right? And this time around, we tried to free her. We ended up as the prisoner. And now 
I guess I'm gonna go back and see what happens, because if I turn around... Actually... Oh yeah, if I turn around, we'll go back to the beginning, right? Hmm. But now we have the voice of the skeptic. It's like we found a new NPC. <laughs> voice of the skeptic down a different path. Okay. I'm inclined to agree. If he doesn't remember what happened last time, maybe it's best to keep it that way. You know I can hear you two, right? It's going to be a lot harder than you think to keep secrets from me. And as far as trying to help her goes, need I remind you how catastrophically dangerous she is to the world at large? I told you about the stakes of this situation less than a minute ago. So, um... I wonder if we can get to Chapter 3, The Nightmare, if we do what we did the first time. Let's assume I'm telling the truth and all this really did already happen. Why should I listen to you? Why should I bother doing anything? Let's go. A warning before you go any further. She will lie. She will ch Yes, yes, don't believe a word she says. Just go in, take the knife, and do what you're supposed to. I'm just going to kind of skip Wait. through some of the dialogue we've heard before. I'm assuming that you guys will have watched from the beginning. Did you just say wink out loud? No, I didn't. Wink. <laughs> just ignore this clown and focus on the princess. The oh. interior of the cabin oh. is less a cozy woodland retreat and more like a dungeon. A few pathetic wisps of starlight attempt to illuminate the cold, uninviting stone walls, and thick, wrought iron bars barricade the windows, reminding anyone who enters that this is a prison. There's a mirror there. The only furniture of note is an iron table, bolted to the floor, a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. He didn't say anything about the mirror on the wall. He definitely did not. Does a mirror not count as furniture of note to you? Because it should. There isn't a mirror. There's a table, the, the blade sitting on the table, and the door to the basement. There's nothing else in here. There's definitely a mirror. Also, you didn't mention the windows. There isn't. I think you know what we have to do. Why would you lie about that? What's the point? Exactly. Why would I lie about something so meaningless? What good would a mirror even do? Let you waste time preening yourself instead of doing what needs to be done. Obviously, we're going to approach the mirror. Now we're going to see what we look like. You walk up to the wall next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. <laughs> this really isn't funny. Wipe the mirror clean. You reach forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. But it was there a second ago, and now it's gone. If he doesn't want us to know about it, it must be important. We should keep our eyes peeled. Maybe it'll be back. Um, okay. Take the blade. You take the blade from the table. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. Good idea. Much better to be armed than to go in with blind hope alone. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing an old stone staircase. A few sputtering torches attempt to vaguely illuminate your path, dancing across glimmering patches of slimy moss on the stone steps. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favor. Her voice, harsh but controlled, carries up the stairs. Is that a visitor I hear? Please, come downstairs. It's been a while since I've had company. This is the same. Does she remember us? You walk down the ah. stairs and lock eyes with the princess. She looks up at you, the heavy collar around her neck clanking loudly as she moves. The chains binding both her wrists to the far wall join the metallic chorus as she adjusts her hands in her lap. Aside from the three chains instead of the one, and also there's one that's free. I bet you that I bet you we were chained next to her. 
should we be worried about the one around her neck? Why would you be worried about her restraints? If anything, they'll make your job easier. Have you noticed the empty chain on the wall? Odd that in a place where everything seems to serve a distinct purpose, there would be something so obviously useless. Now, I wonder if we got her to leave and she destroyed the world and that's what created the next one. And kind of same with the first one, right? She created the nightmare or she created, I shouldn't say she created, we we went to another world, the nightmare. Same with same with this, we went to another world, the, pr the prisoner world. So if we get her to escape again, there might be a, another chapter. What an interesting development. Why don't you have a seat? The two of us should chat before you bury that thing in my heart. Okay. Last time we waited, we went to the nightmare. Let's sit with her. You step towards the princess, but she stops you before you get too close, holding up one shackled hand. There is fine. I'd prefer we keep some distance until we've sorted this I out. I guess it's kind of, we can't cut her head and both her arms off and have her survive, right? Uh, but I, I don't know, maybe, maybe we should have checked her pulse last time. That's reasonable. We do have a weapon. Sure. Well, we killed her. Well put her at ease. Um. Okay, let's follow her instructions. Sit where you're told to sit. You do as she asks and sit on the floor, still a good distance away from her. Thank you. Now, what are your intentions for me? What happened after I died last time? Oh, are we talking about that? I thought we weren't going to give away the game. But sure, I'll fill you in. Nothing happened. You died. I went upstairs. I couldn't leave. I found myself in a new place in chains again. More of them. And now you're back. Is that really all she knows? It's not like we have much of a clue about how things work. And she's probably even more in the dark than we are. So she knows about last time, because we didn't give her any details. She... Unless she's just completely making something up that happens to fit with what... What happened last time. You're looking at me like I might be hiding something. I'm not. It could be that, like, we're trapped here together. Like, it's not prisoner... She's not the prisoner of chapter two. It's us. I guess it's possible she really doesn't know anything. Maybe both of us are stuck in this loop without any idea why or how. There you go. First you make a comment about having been here before, and now this. As much as I would like to remain in denial, it's no use. This has complicated things. It's complicated things how, exactly? Ideally, this was supposed to be one and done. You go to the cabin, you heroically slay the princess, and in the process you save the entire world from being damned to oblivion. The situation right now, where you're getting a second shot at things, is a contingency. A contingency for what? For you failing, obviously. And you being here means that things are going to be a lot harder than they were. I really shouldn't say anything else, I'm just going to make it worse, just good luck. If you knew this could happen, why didn't you tell us? All of this is incredibly valuable information. It would have changed our actions considerably. Because the narrator knows that the in the end, we have to kill her, <laughs> probably. Because we're just never going to get out of this. I needed you to be in the dark for as long as I could keep you there. It's important. Necessary, even. And maybe I wanted to be the first version of me that you met. I didn't want to be confronted by the alternative. That's pathetic. I never said I wasn't. I get it. It would be pretty upsetting, wouldn't it? To know that you might not be the first version of yourself. At least we can remember what happened before. Seems like we should count ourselves lucky for that. Exactly, he gets it. You're lucky. So don't waste that luck by messing it up again. All right? 
Moving on. Why is it important for us to be ignorant? How is it ever helpful to be in the dark? The more I say, the more your mind will swim into dangerous waters. Even saying that is too much. Your success hinges on you having imperfect information. For the sake of the entire world, you need to accept that. I won't. Fine, but you won't get another word from me on the matter. Yeah, sure. We'll see about that. Just give it a rest, this isn't helping. She's like, who are you talking to? Focus. This is a serious situation. You shouldn't be daydreaming. Oh, she doesn't hear that. That other chain on the wall, who is it for? I don't know, but you could always try it on. Maybe it'll fit. I hope I don't actually have to say this, but please don't lock yourself in chains. We need you ambulatory if you're going to save the world. Uh, well, we could still inspect them. I want to ask more questions. You're asking about my intentions earlier. What do you mean by that? Yes, your intentions. You have a knife. What are you going to do with it? Why are you here? There isn't a keyhole in these shackles, and I don't see any keys in your hands either. So I'm afraid my only way out is another surgical removal. Is she forgetting about the shackle on her neck? Or does she think she'd survive a beheading? Once again, it's pretty loose. You could maybe just cut off her chin and her nose. You're right. Maybe she's delusional. All the more reason hair. not to trust her. Unless she really could survive. Though I suppose you could just be here to kill me. But I don't think that's in either of our best interests. How am I supposed to cut you out if you didn't notice your head is in a shackle too? No, no. Like I trust you to come any closer with that knife. All you're going to do is hand it to me and watch me work. But she would have to cut her head off, right? She can't be suggesting that. Maybe to kill, maybe if she kills us. She certainly she seems out. confident. Maybe she knows something we don't. She's got a narrator too, and the narrator's like, you gotta kill this guy that's coming down to free you, or to kill you. Or maybe you should consider the most likely scenario. She's bluffing so she can disarm you. Though if she isn't bluffing, whatever she has planned might be for her benefit alone. There's no guarantee that what's good for her is good for us. So, what should we do? I don't know. I'm just spelling out our options, listing the pros and cons. Then let me help you. I'll start with the cons. If you're handing her your weapon, the cons are that she might use it to escape and end the entire world. And she might use it to kill you. That doesn't sound great. <laughs> what about the pros? There are none. The pros are that we can't trust him, possibly even more than we can't trust her. And whatever she has planned could do something to mess with what he has planned. Or maybe they're both screwing us over in their own ways. Okay. I have as much reason to distrust you as you have to distrust me, right? I can cut you out of here. I'm not giving you a weapon. I think I'm just going to leave you here, actually. You're not much of a threat to anyone locked up. That by. Let's, uh, let's ex inspect the shackle. I wouldn't do that if I were you. And why is that? Do I even need to explain myself? It's a shackle and it's one without a key. Do you want to be stuck here like she is? And what? Is it going to lock the second we put our wrist into it? I don't know. Maybe it will. He doesn't want us to look at it. That's all the reason we need to investigate. But what if he's telling the truth? He isn't. I am. Inspect. <sighs> Against your better judgment, you approach the chain dangling from the far wall. The princess watches you with faux disinterest as you inspect it, though she can't fully hide her curiosity. I don't want to say what I'm supposed to say next. What is that supposed to mean? It sounds bad. Is it bad? 
Yes, it's bad. Come out and say it then. You're just wasting time. Fine. As you hoist the shackle, <laughs> its heft shifts within your grasp, as if pulled by some odd magnetism. <laughs> Before you can so much as blink, it practically leaps from your hands, snapping around your I neck. wonder if someone else is going to come down here to kill both of us. And, as if your situation weren't bad enough, the same magnetism repels your blade, which is flung from your hand and sent skittering across the floor of the basement. Um, excuse me? Yes? Are we stuck here now? Come your own jailer. Yes. Huh, so it does fit. And I guess it doesn't like your knife. We're stuck here together, aren't we? That's funny. What are we supposed to do now? Can't even cut ourselves out. Guess we'll starve. That's horrible. It's not all bad. We learned a valuable piece of information. Not to touch things we're specifically told not to touch? No, that there's something special about this loose chain. It's clearly important. Did you know this was going to happen to me? No. Uh, so we're both stuck here. Yep. What should we do? Wait, I guess. Maybe something else will happen. Maybe not. Not one for small talk, are you? Nope. That's rude. Okay, we'll wait in silence. You and the princess wait in silence, though neither of you knows what you're waiting for. This is so boring. There must be something we can do to get out of here. There must be something we're missing. But there isn't. Time passes. It passes and passes and passes. And the basement of the cabin remains much the same. It is cold and silent. At least the world is safe. It isn't. You're stuck. Too far away from both the princess and your blade to do much of anything. But she's not ending anything. She's just sitting there. Her very existence is a threat. It harms everything around it. How exactly does that work? It just does. But your line of questioning is interrupted by the passage of even more time. <laughs> and after that, even more time passes again. And let me guess, the cabin remains the same. If time is passing, the okay, cabin hear me can't out, be the same. Even if the differences are small, they have to exist. That's just how things work. We could fashion some kind of thing to, like, she's got that crown, and using her dress, we could make a little rope, and we could grab the knife. I suppose you're correct. Things are changing. The differences are small at first, a bit of weathering here, a bit of erosion there. But then they get larger. And larger. Have you noticed the basement changing? I don't like small talk, remember? Still rude. Okay. You continue yeah. to wait in silence, and the cabin continues to change. The decay comes faster now. You can see earth through holes in the stonework, can watch lichen spread along the seams of the walls. That doesn't make sense. Has our entire concept of time changed? What happened to starving? We should have died by now if the rocks around us are starting to erode. She hasn't starved. I guess she hasn't. Even more silent time passes as you watch roots push themselves through the increasingly porous walls of the basement. Dirt seeps inside, flowing across the stone floor like a liquid covering the ground and threatening to swallow you both. I don't see any knife Time anymore. Time continues to pass, and pass, and pass, until suddenly, there are no walls. And then... And? I think he's gone. Would you look at that? We made it out of the cabin, and nothing bad had to happen to either of us. 
So this is the outside world. It's cold. Oh, the hands. That's like what happened to us, right? But you don't get the chance to respond. Something has taken her away and it's left something else in her stead. She's gone. Where does she go? Should we try and find her? Oh, there's that mirror again. Why is it here? Why now? Don't know where she went and I don't know how we'd even go about looking for her. The narrator's gone. He is. Does that mean the world ended? It must have. Do any of us know what the world ending is supposed to look like? I don't know where she went and I don't know how we'd even go about looking for her. If there's even a her to find anymore. You're right. She's gone. It's just us and that awful thing. I think I'm supposed to look at the mirror. There's something dreadful about it. I don't think you should. You're right. Part of me wants the truth, but something stronger is holding me back. Fear. Is our reflection going to be the princess? We have no choice. Approach the mirror. I'm begging you, don't do this. The mirror never scared you before. It's different now. It feels... I don't know. Final. You approach the mirror. Gaze into your reflection. Silence as you reach forward. They're gone, but the mirror remains. It's time for you to see what's in it. The body to you. You are alone in a place that is empty. It is quiet here. Proceed to the cabin. You're at the cabin. Approach her. Something finds me in oh, the geez. long quiet and brings me the gift of a fragile vessel. Oh. Uh, what are you? I am solitary lights in an empty city. What are you? What do you mean, solitary lights? Thoughts without connections. A dim and nascent network. I wish to be more. What do you think I am? I think that you are like me. We are oceans reduced to shallow creeks. It did say this is a love story. The gift of a fragile vessel. Yes. Nerves and fibers to feel the world's beyond. Perspectives to make my own. This one is cold and cynical. She has protected herself when others could not. She will make for a clever heart. Do not mourn her. She doesn't need to be protected any longer. So she's harboring some entity. Is this the end of the world? How can the world have ended if we are talking? Do you know the narrator? You are the only thing I have ever known. The space we're in is vacant. Nothing comes here but us. Okay. Are you what sent me to slay the princess? Are you what trapped me here? I have only just now stirred to consciousness. I could not have trapped you here, and I too yearn to be free. Do you know about the worlds beyond this place? I know only that they are. Okay. Destroy your body. Attack the entity. I'm gonna keep exploring. Let her out of there. I'm sorry. 
There are some changes that can never be undone. There are some tears that can never be unshed. This is not a place that can hold a fragment of a concept. The moment she arrived here, she was going to return to me. We brought her here. I promise that it doesn't hurt. Are you the princess? She is part of me, and part of me is her. But were you always a princess, or are you just making her a part of yourself? You speak in circles. Does it matter where one thing begins and another ends? Do we know each other? You are familiar, but you are not me. I feel sadness, longing, hope as I witness you. You want me to be a part of you as well? Um... Shoot, man, I don't... <sighs> what happens now? Nothing, as we are. But I know that there are worlds beyond us, and that we are meant to reach them. There is no exit, but this vessel is a creature of perception. She can make you forget. If only you believe her to be able to. Bring me more perspectives so that I may be whole. And perhaps then we will know our freedom. So does she want to be fed more worlds? Like... Huh. Okay. If I was sent to slay the princess to stop her from destroying the world, if I help you, is that what you're going to do? You ask of things that cannot be done. To destroy is merely to reshape. To change it, yeah. To remold. You're being semantic. What are you going to do if I help you? How can I know? I am flickers and something sprawling and unilluminated. Aren't you scared that I'll find a way to kill you? I have not lived. I am not afraid to die. How much will I forget? Everything. Until we meet again. How many more pieces of you do I have to find? More than you have found, but less than there are to find. I am infinite. The rest will find their own way home. And what if I don't let you do this to me? Then we will be here forever, as we are now. Unfinished. Dry. Hollow. What happens if we wait? If you need time. And I'll wait with you. Wait forever? You are as I am now, and forever is a long time to remain undone. I am not you, but I know that I would return before forever was finished. What textures will you weave for yourself to occupy forever? Will you place the images of you and I into a box for safekeeping? If you close that box, so weird. will you become another you in another world? An imaginary pattern repeating itself until it can no longer bear the weight of its hand-drawn cage? You'll always come back to the box, because you'll always want to know what it means to be you. I will be here waiting by your side until you're ready to return to mine. The game closed. <laughs> you have returned to me. Though you were gone mere moments, I never left your side. We're back to it. To slay the princess. A game about... Reality, about destiny, about 
the meaning of existence, really. And I feel like maybe these two, the, the, the you know, the princess and us who said to, to kill her, it's kind of like we both need to exist to provide meaning for each other, to, to for the reward for a world to exist almost. That's the impression I'm getting so far. But I think we still have uh still have a lot more to explore. So sh this thing wanted to inhabit our body, I think. Currently she's inhabiting the princess's body. Make me forget. She asks that I tell you to remember her. You won't. Everything goes dark and you die. <laughs> the hero and the princess. Bring the prisoner to her. You're on a path in the woods. Wait. And at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. I took I took a break from the last uh, video, and uh, I can't remember if that's was always the title of the first chapter. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. So this is all the same. We'll just continue. Uh... Sweet, I've always wanted to off a monarch. Viva la revolution. That's the spirit. We haven't d tried that yet. I'm curious. You make your way up. Curious to see. To the cabin. You'll find the princess within. So, um... Like, that's how, you, that's how you play these games, right? You try different things and see what happens and try to figure out what it all means. Or... You don't have to figure out what it means. You can just determine what it means for you. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. We're not gonna go through with this, right? She's a princess. We're supposed to save princesses, not slay them. Ignore him, he doesn't know. We've heard this all before. So we tried turning around before. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The blade is your implement. What if we don't take the blade? I don't think we've done that before. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase. For Her voice softly carries up the stairs. We, we've heard, I'm skipping the stuff that we've heard before. Hello? Is someone there? Is hypnotizing it's the kind of voice you only have to hear once to remember it for the rest of your life i think that's different don't let it fool you huh? it's all part of the manipulation you're playing a dangerous game by coming here unarmed yeah we we haven't come in unarmed before okay I'm here to save you. How many times do I have to tell you how dangerous letting her out of here would be before it finally sinks in? Wait, really? You're here to rescue me? I, I was starting to think I'd be stuck down here forever. Come downstairs. I want to see the face of my rescuer. She, she, she seems different. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's beautiful. How could someone like this be a threat to anyone? I am begging you to stay focused. There's a lot riding on you here. I think before it said something about like a cool beauty. Hi, I can't believe you're here. I've been waiting for something like this to happen forever. Literally. I hope you brought something to deal with these chains. I guess also like just going back to like what what the world is or what existence is, we're playing a game, right? So this world only exists while you're playing the game. Don't do it. If she gets out of those chains, we're all one step closer to the end. 
I'll see what I can do. Examine the chance. You're only making this more difficult. Thank you. Thank you. You're making a huge mistake. No, you're doing the right thing. You walk up to the chains binding the princess to the wall and give them a tug. They're large and heavy, far too solid for you to even imagine trying to break them apart. So previously, we brought the knife down. <laughs> she, she cut her arm off and then killed us. I can't remember if she did or if we did. With I'm the guessing knife. you don't have the key? Maybe it's somewhere upstairs. Doubtful. Whoever locked the princess away down here intended for her to never see the light of day. They wouldn't have just left the key to her chains somewhere in the cabin. Okay. Um... I'm gonna check upstairs. Maybe the key still lying around somewhere up there. And if not, maybe I can at least find something to break you free. Okay, I'll be here. Good luck. This is different. You attempt to make your way out of the basement, but the door at the top oh, right, of the stairs right, right. slams shut. You hear the click of a lock sliding into place. We did experience this before. Someone else here. Turn to the bottom of the stairs. You make your way to the bottom of the stairs. This would have been so much easier if you'd just taken the blade like you were supposed to. We don't have the blade at all in this one, though. Easier for whom? Easier for everyone. Look at the mess you're in. This is the trapped one, right? I heard the door slam. They Prisoner. locked you down here too, didn't they? There's a slight panic rising in the princess's voice. If I could just get out of these chains, I know we could force our way out of here together. She barely hesitates oh. before raising her arm to her mouth. Okay. Her teeth tearing through her limb with the determination of a trapped wolf. As she rips her flesh from her bone, a sound comes from behind you. The clang of bouncing metal. Oh. It's the blade from upstairs. You're not sure how it made its way down here, but if there's a time to strike, it's now. Or we could use it to free her. You won't like what happens if you do that. I don't have a choice. <sighs> Fine. Save the against printer. your better judgment, Kick you place the blade against the ragged, self-inflicted wound on the princess's arm, just above the unyielding chain binding her to this place. You cut into her flesh. The blade is sharp, and it takes little effort to crack through the bone of her arm. Her limb falls to the ground, and the heavy chains follow suit. She didn't so much as utter a sound through the whole ordeal. No, she didn't. She smiles softly as her gaze meets yours, blood from her wounded arm dripping rhythmically to the ground. Now, we didn't lie to her this time. We actually said we wanted to help her, so maybe she won't kill us. How is she still smiling after everything? It's like she isn't even bothered by what just happened. Thank you. Now let's get out of here. Approach the locked door. <sighs> no, we won't have any of that. The stakes are too high. You can't just let her escape into the world. Oh, right. No, I can't just let her escape into this the world. This is where we're forced to try to kill her, right? As yeah. the princess approaches the bottom stair, your body steps forward and raises the blade. Should I just do it this time? Wait. This isn't fair. You can't just do that. Watch me. What are you doing? So we've warned her before. But then she ends up killing us. But maybe... Maybe she won't this time so we didn't come down with the knife. Stop that. Something's come over you, hasn't it? Y you know you don't have to do this, right? Your body lunges forward, the blade held low, ready to sink into her heart. But the princess dodges, stumbling back against the wall before the blade has a chance to connect. This seems different, I, th I think. I don't know. I, my memory's not amazing. Stop it. Stop trying to resist me. I'm trying to get you out of here alive. Let's try to resist again. The blade. Move the blade. 
As your body remains frozen in stubborn resistance, the princess takes a cautious step forward. We both know this isn't you. She nervously reaches towards you and takes the blade from your infuriatingly rigid hands. Uh oh, I think we're gonna get what stabbed again. What are you doing? We're gonna get sliced. I'm sorry. I'll try to be quick. She plunges it into your chest, oh. tearing through flesh and sinew. It is agony. But you aren't dead yet. I think she cut her throat last time. Oh no, I'm so sorry. <laughs> what? <laughs> I just did it by accident, I swear. Stay strong. We can tough it out until it's done. For her sake. For her sake? Don't you start pretending that dying a painful death is some sort of heroic gesture. The two of you have literally doomed everyone. Whatever. She sinks the blade into your chest again and again and again, and you feel every inch of burning pain that slices its way into your body. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> She doesn't know how to use a knife, does she? Apparently not, though it doesn't matter how sloppy her knife work is, does it? A stab wound is still a stab wound, and it won't be long before you bleed out. I'm so sorry! This, remi this reminds me of a scene from, like, um... The Nonari games, for, uh, Visual Dom, which I have played all of on the channel, if you're interested. With one last thrust of the knife, your legs give out beneath you. You collapse to the floor, your blood pooling around you, your limbs unresponsive. The princess stares down at your ruined chest as tears carve rivulets of pink down her blood-spattered cheeks. It can't just end like this, right? I mean, we didn't scream out in pain. Oh, that's rich coming from you. As much as I'd prefer for things to have gone differently, I can't deny the reality of what's happened. The two of you made your choice. It's over. Everything goes dark. And you die. The Damsel. Okay, new chapter. New, well, new chapter two. You're on a path in the woods. And at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin Although... is a princess. It's kind of like chapter 2.2 2 because we're continuing. I'm a look because we started a new game once when we like turned away from everything. So is this a continuation? I like, is that we're still continuing that game? Because I didn't load, I just clicked on new game. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. So we did this before. Okay, no. Oh, don't you start grandstanding about morals. The fate of the world is at risk right now, and the life of a mere princess shouldn't stop you from saving us all. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. Yes, he didn't approve of us last time, Smitten. did he? If we're going to save our beloved, we'll have to be sneaky about it. Our beloved? Yes, you'll have to be very sneaky about your intentions if you're going to try and save the princess. Ah, so all of the cards are on the table. Then you should know that we and the princess are in love, and the four of us will be foiling any and all assassination attempts you've got in the works. Wait, the four of us? The smitten, the hero, the princess, and the player? Or, or are they talking about the narrator too? <laughs> Who's the four of us? We'll see about that. Whatever you do, just be sure to ignore him specifically. Sounds like he's the sort who'd sacrifice the whole world for a peck on the cheek. What can I say? A world without love is a world that isn't worth saving.
Yeah, we're gonna proceed. We're gonna follow the smitten. This time. A warning before you go any further. She will lie. She. We already told you we're not playing along with your little game. It's your lies that can't be trusted. Her beauty is the only thing in the world we can believe in. <laughs> I think we've already been over this. I'm pretty sure he just likes the sound of his own voice. I do, but I also speak from the heart. My passions are too great to be stifled. They must be expressed. Sure, yeah, your passions are strong and all, but not everyone needs to hear them. Some things are better kept quiet. So what? I'm so curious to see what the cabin's going to look like this time. Don't pay their bickering any mind. Focus on the task ahead. Because it's been a cabin, and then it's been, like, a dungeon, almost. Maybe a castle this time? But a castle looks like, like a dungeon. Maybe it'll just be the same. The interior ah, of the cabin yes, is yes. clean and elegant, its stone walls draped in fine threaded tapestries, a prison befitting a royal prisoner. The only furniture of note is an ornate wooden table with a pristine blade perched on its edge. So they're not pointing out this or the mirror again. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. We have appro we approached the mirror before. What if we just enter this time? The mirror disappears. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing an intricate stairwell. Gold-trimmed carpet glimmers in the light of the torches positioned along the walls. The basement almost seems welcoming in the dim firelight. Yeah, it's it's a little it's a little different when you just go in without any kind of intention to kill her. Like, without bringing the dagger, it's all nice and cheery. But it's still a stone basement. If the princess Except lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. A soft voice carries up the stairs. Hello? Is someone there? Her voice. It's somehow even more beautiful than last time. <laughs> the last time she murdered us! Already. Does Smith not remember her stabbing us repeatedly in the heart? I've held my tongue till now, but you're taking this a little too far. We barely even know the princess. We can still do right by her without all this over-the-top fawning. Yes, for everyone's sake, you're not in love. <sighs> Just remember that her charms are all part of the manipulation. I wonder how many times this narrator is going to have to sigh. <laughs> with me playing a lot. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall. Not around her uh, neck and her other arm, though. My love, we're here to rescue you from your unjust and foul imprisonment. You know she can't hear you, right? She may not be able to hear my words, but surely she can hear my spirit. Oh, your spirit's plenty loud, all right. It's you, my dashing hero. I was so worried you wouldn't come back. Did you hear that? She said we're dashing. And she called us a hero. Flattery really goes a long way with the two of you, doesn't it? Waiting for you to come back. I didn't want to believe your ravings back in the woods, but this is next to incontrovertible evidence. You've been here before. That's right, villain. And you killed us. Well, she killed us. <laughs> Only because he made us try and kill her. True. self-defense. True. Our beloved's hands remain unstained by cruelty. And you've died before. So an entire world has been damned to oblivion. I'd really hoped I'd be the first, but what's done is done. Oh. What matters is you have a chance to do it right this time. You died before, an entire world has been damned to oblivion. I'd really hoped I'd be the first. Okay. That's interesting. Interestingly put. We damned a whole world. But everything reset. 
Nothing resets, you're just somewhere else. You can't keep hopping between worlds forever. Especially not without leaving a trail of incomprehensible devastation behind you. <sighs> this is horrible. <sighs> horrible for you, maybe. That's like three times. We've been given another opportunity to sweep her off her feet and treat her like the lady she is. I need a psych count in the comments. Now, hold on. If she actually ended a world, are you sure we want to do this? Are you sure we want to rescue her? We never saw a world end, and now I'm even more certain that we must chase our heroic and romantic destiny than I've ever been. I shan't let anyone convince us otherwise. Are you listening to him? He's lost it. Don't let him distract you. Just do your job. Okay. Okay. I didn't bring a knife. Do I have to cut you out again? I gotta, I gotta, I'm gonna ask her questions. You killed me last time and it hurt a lot. Why did you do that? I'm sorry. Didn't you want me to? Did we? We warned her of the cruel forces seizing our body. That's practically telling her to kill us. She is our beloved and she made the choice to free us of our misery, to show us mercy and make the best decision for everyone. I'm with, I'm with Smitten. She made the best decision for her. Don't be so quick to assign kindness. You're just opening yourself up to manipulation. I'm I'm down to be manipulated. I did bring a knife. Do I have to cut you out again? I'm okay with whatever you come up with. You can cut my arm off again. We won't be laying a finger on her perfect wrists. And indeed, we won't even have to. Do you see how dainty her hands are? We'll be able to slip her right out with no harm done. What? No, she's a prisoner here. You can't just slip her hand through the chains. Why are you two arguing over the logistics of slipping her hand out of her shackles? She just said she'd be okay with any idea we came up with. Am I the only one here who thinks that's weird? She didn't care last time. Why should she care this time? That's our stoic, smiling angel. No, you're right. It's extremely bizarre behavior and further evidence that she's a monster who's not to be trusted. <laughs> So go ahead and slay her. What happened after I died? You died, and now we're talking. But before we started talking, did the world end? Did you end the world? I don't know. Was I supposed to have ended the world? Would that have made you happy? Isn't that just like our darling princess? She wants to make us happy. My heart melts further with every word that passes through her beautiful lips. Are you listening to her? That's a confession. Um. <laughs> the world sucks. People are playing and I hope you brought a slow and painful ruin to them all. Um. I guess now I don't want the world to end. Then I didn't end the world. I believe her. See? She didn't confess anything. She is innocence itself. I'm not so sure. Listen, I'm sorry about what happened last time. The narrator who sent me here to kill you took over my body. It was extremely unfair. If another version of me was pushed to such drastic action, it was for good reason. I really wonder if there's anything to click on in the environment. That's okay. You were just doing your best, and that's all that matters. That's right. She took that in stride. To a surprising extent. An almost unsettling extent, actually. That's because she's perfect. Do you think she has someone like him telling her what to do? Exactly. She doesn't. There's no one else like me. She has a narrator too, doesn't she? We need to find her narrator. Maybe it's the same narrator. But really, it's probably just all us, right? It's our imagination. I think he's right, because I like it better if she doesn't have some horrid little voice like him, always trying to drive her to violence. Rescue the princess. No, I can't let you do that. If you take another step towards the princess, I'll... I would if oh. you had a weapon. Uh, wait. I, th I was trying to skip to the next dialogue, but it did it for me. Um...
You can only do that if you take another step towards the Princess L. You'll what? Take over her body and force us to try to kill her? Okay. I would if you had a weapon. Not on my watch, villain. My passions contain titanic depths, and if you try anything that might harm our dearest, I will end our life without a second thought. You wouldn't. I would. I'd listen to him if I were you. He has a lot of strong feelings. And doesn't the world end if we don't stop her? Hey! You approach the princess and gingerly hey. slide her hand from her bindings. That shouldn't have worked. I'll be damned. We're doomed. I can't believe it. But I guess I have to. I told you. There's no life more worth living than that of a true believer. I'm free, and you're not trying to kill me this time. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. The princess jumps up and smothers you in a joyful embrace. Ugh. <laughs> if only you had a weapon, one slip of the wrist and your pristine blade would be buried in her back and everyone out there would be saved. Luckily for Mr. Romance, we don't have a weapon. It, narrator's not a very romantic guy. Who needs a weapon when we have the power of love on our side? What do we do now? Babies? What do you want to do? Let me guess. End the world? Spoken with the rank cynicism of someone who has never felt love in his heart. I... Don't actually know. Nobody's ever asked me what I wanted before. She doesn't even know what she wants. You may have had her all wrong. What if this whole thing is just a misunderstanding? What if she doesn't want to end the world? You're so gullible. Is the only thing you've ever doubted the actual truth? I think I want to leave. And I think... The princess closes her eyes in deep reflection. And then she shrugs. I don't know. What do you want to do? I want you to tell me what you want. <laughs> um, I want you to tell me what you want. I just want to make you happy. Uh-oh. She can't just want to make us happy. The music changed. It makes sense to me. That's all I want for her, so of course she'd want the same for us. Um, maybe we don't want to... There's a lot here. Must be something you want, but what would make you happy? You have to want something more than just making me happy. You need your own thing. It's like... We, we... We found something that... Could make us happy, but we want... We don't understand it. We don't understand what's going on, and we have to... Try to, like... Create a new problem. You know, we, uh, people do that. It's like, things are going fine, and then we have to create drama in order to create problems for us to solve. I want you to make me happy. Okay, if that's what makes you happy, I can make you unhappy. Is she broken? What's going on? <laughs> What's going on is she's lying to you, only she isn't a good liar. Are you starting to trust me now? Um. This uh, this isn't right. Let's just get out of here. That sounds perfect. Oh, phew. She's back to normal. Normal? What are you talking about? Our angel has always been like this. Absolutely. It's like, I don't like this. Let's just go. The princess takes your hand. The last hopes of the entire world slipping through your fingers as they intertwine with hers. We have each other. We don't need the world for our happy ending. I like to think that you do, actually. Look, I have my doubts, but the choice has been made and this is happening. You don't have to mope about it. I will mope about it, because moping is the only recourse you love blind fools have left me with. You and the princess walk up the stairs, hand in hand. Ugh, look at the way she's smiling at you. 
She doesn't have to be so happy about this. And what happens after we walk up the stairs? Let's see. Oh, isn't that interesting? The door slams in your face and the <laughs> lock clicks. <laughs> That's a familiar move. Did I do that last time? Then you should know that you won't be able to leave. Oh no, did someone lock us in here? That's not fair. We're supposed to leave now. She's right, it isn't fair. But the unfairnesses of the world are no match for the strength of true love. Let's do this, Smitten! Enough with this true love nonsense, you just met her! Of course you wouldn't understand. Our passions run deeper than anything you have ever known. Are you listening to this? You don't have to go along with the every whim of that delusional voice. I'm just along for the ride at this point. <laughs> I'm with Hero. Um... You think... You think you could open it? Well, I don't know. Do you think I can? Of course she can. You believe in her, right? Nobody is leaving this basement. Yeah, I think you've got this. Okay, let me try. The princess tries the handle. And... The lock clicks, and the door creaks open. Are you kidding me? We're believing in love! I told you she could do it. You and the princess make your way upstairs, and the blade. That's right, there's still oh God, a chance for you to do the right thing. Take the blade from she's the table and slay her before us, right? it's too late. You're not doing that. You're enjoying this, aren't you? You're taking every opportunity you can to draw out the end of the world and make me suffer. I hate you. That's the way out. We're going to leave together, just like you wanted. Yes, I suppose you are going to do that, aren't you? You cross the room, opening the door to the cabin, and then you step outside. Your love will set you free. A happy ending at last. Uh oh, it's closing in again. We did it. What should we do now? Where did everything go? Where did he go? Oh, is he gone? I hadn't noticed. I was too busy staring deep into our beloved's eyes. I'm cold. Is being happy supposed to be so cold? She's cold. Quick, our feathers. Pluck them all and weave her a coat worthy of a princess. We have feathers? And, like, lizard arms? Oh, they're back. Oh. Oh. But you don't get the chance to make that jacket. Nor will you ever. It's time for you to leave. Memory returns. She's gone. Where does she go? Should we try and find her? And is that a mirror? Why is it here? Why now? So they made us forget, and now they want us to remember. Of course you're scared. This is the end for you, but it's not the end for me. What is that supposed to mean? Whatever awful thing I felt before, it feels so much worse now. Do it then. End us all before I die of a broken heart. Approach the mirror. Approach the mirror. Gaze into your reflection. Yeah, I guess we do have feathers. Silence as you reach forward. They're gone once again. The mirror always makes them leave, but you need to see what's in it. The bloat, you've grown. Uh, you've grown, okay. Okay. Find yourself in the long quiet once again. Proceed to the cabin. You're at the cabin. Approach her. 
Flickering lights in empty cityscapes become pockets of vitality and movement. I am more than I was before. Okay. You experience love, maybe? Whenever you are ready, I will wipe your slate clean once again. Are you the same being as you were before? How much have you ate? Have you changed? Is a child the same as an infant? I am an unbroken pattern, but every vessel gives fresh perspectives and carves new avenues of expression. I am different, but I am the same. What does it feel like to change like this? Eyes close in reflection. Perspectives meld together, and the breadth of my experience stretches to new corners. There are contradictions. Conflicts in my nature, and there are familiarities that bind everything together. It feels correct. This is what I need to be. This is the only path forward. Um, she's gonna say something like, This will never end. When this is all done, do you know what you want to do? With every gift you bring me, I excavate the alleys of what I am meant to be, and every exploration yields new and complicated truths. What I will be is different than what I am, and what I am is different from what I was. I cannot tell you what desires I will hold when I have changed. But in this moment, all I want is to know myself and to know you. Um, there's a lot. Ready to go back? Attack? Oh, we haven't taken those two options. I'm not going to say that yet. Um, You've been kinder to me than anyone else I've met. Why? Why wouldn't I be kind to you? You are the only thing I know that isn't me. What do you feel about me? These vessels I've been bringing you. I've hurt them. The vessels are shaped by memories of you, but their impulses are drawn to the edge of the long quiet. To them, you are a gate to something more and any hurt you've caused them is understood as a fair price for freedom. But they are only thoughts and perspectives. They are not me. The wounds they've suffered carve texture around my heart. Without them, I would be as I was before. I would be alone and without sensation. I could not feel the joy of having you by my side, for I would not know your absence. What do you want me to bring you next time? Gifts aren't what someone tells you to bring them. My joy is in seeing what you choose. There are no wrong answers, and every perspective illuminates my shadows and shares new secrets. Fair. Do you have any thoughts on this vessel? This one is soft and delicate. You molded her to love you. And she'll make for a gentle heart. Okay, so we're not giving her us. We're changing the, the princess based on her actions. And she's ex getting different experiences to grow with. But also, we're growing. Because we're finding out more about ourselves and what we're capable of, I guess, maybe? Do not mourn her. She has served her purpose. So you don't have any preferences on how you'd like to change or grow? My preference is for you to show me what you would like me to see. I cannot know the ways I wish to grow, for I have yet to feel them. It is you who guides me down the thin trail of perspective and memory. I think we do have a sense of how we want to grow, right? We give ourselves goals and then we try to set out to accomplish them. 
but you know, it's a different being, I guess. How many more vessels do I need to bring you? If I am to be an ocean, you have nurtured me into a pond. My waters are shallow and murky, and I yearn for more perspective. You will have your rest in due time, and I am sorry for the burdens I place on you. Destroy your body. I mean, we haven't done these things yet. Oh, can we not repeat things? When I go back, it's as if an invisible wall closed around me. Why can I not do the same things I've done? It's funny, I've always chosen different things, but maybe I just couldn't choose the same things. Those paths lead to worlds you've already seen and to perspectives I have already made my own. They are useless to us now, inaccessible. The only paths of value are those that are yet untread. Okay. What happens if we destroy our body? You raise your will to end your life, but as it buries into the space, your body should be, you feel nothing at all. One of the many hands in front of you reaches forward and gently touches the side of your face. There's nowhere for you to be but here. What if I attack the entity? Your will cuts across the entity in front of you, but nothing happens. My roots burrow in an ocean beyond your sight. We cannot harm each other as we are now. Oh, as we are now. I'm ready to go back. I'm not going to tell them. Can I kill them? I will long for your return but it will give me time to reflect on what I am. We will meet again. Everything goes dark and you die. <laughs> again. Bring the damsel to her. Okay, loving vessel. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. We're back to the beginning, and I guess we could just do whatever, and we're going to get a different outcome. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. So... I mean, we've asked all these questions. Do we just go up there? You know what? I didn't try you turning around and then going to the cabin. Path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she- We're not gonna go through with this, right? She's a princess. Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Heard all this before. Okay, we can't turn around when we get to this point. I'm so curious to see what's gonna happen if we just follow... The interior of the cat- The blade path that we have before. I think we're gonna take the blade this time. You take the blade from the table. It'd be rather difficult to slay the princess and save the world without it. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by a her voice carries up the stairs. Okay, now I'm curious. What's her voice going to be like? Who's there? She sounds dangerous. It's almost as if she's the one in charge down here. It sounds like it did the first time. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. Hey, I think I'm here to kill you. Uh. Oh, are you now? Why don't you come down and let me take a look at you? Great job. You gave away the element of surprise. Good luck, hero. I don't think we tried that before. I'm still gonna try different things though. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's so coldly beautiful. Focus okay, yeah, on we got this before. You weren't kidding when you said you were here to kill me. Yeah, it wasn't a joke. I know. You brought a knife with you and everything. 
But you don't have to try and kill me. You could always toss that scrap of metal to the ground and give the two of us a chance to talk things out. She makes a compelling point. What if we didn't kill her? What if we just dropped the blade and talked? Don't you dare. It's fine. We can decide what we want to do after we talk to her. Maybe she really is a monster. But killing someone in cold blood isn't very becoming of us. Tighten your grip. I, I, I think we have definitely dropped it. We're going to tighten our grip. You ignore the trembling in your hands and tighten your grip on the blade. You poor thing. Your hands are shaking. Are you scared of me? Because you should be. You step forward, your grip on the blade tightening as you steal your resolve. Oh? No talking then? Fine. What even makes you think you can kill me? I'm probably chained up in this basement for a reason, right? And if that knife is the only weapon you have, you'll have to get close enough to use it. So, you should just drop it. Best not to risk finding out what I can do. She's unarmed. If you hesitate now, it'll be too late. End this. What if she isn't bluffing? What if she kills us? Are you sure she's not armed? I'm positive. I'm not. But we'll keep our eyes peeled. If she has a weapon, she'll have to draw it before she can use it. I don't think we explored this before. Hesitating? Why don't you drop the knife and the two of us can be civilized with each other? I'm not dropping the blade. Then I'm not talking to you. Fine, then I guess we're at an impasse. Well, I guess we are. For the love of everything, just slay her. <laughs> <laughs> or drop the blade. Do something. Stare at the princess while holding on to the blade. You stare at the princess, squinting fiercely. We definitely haven't done this. <laughs> she squints back. Oops, didn't mean to do that. I right clicked. Uh, the two of you are gonna do this forever, aren't you? You'll have to blink eventually. Just make a choice. We did slay the, okay. If different things are supposed to happen, what happens if we slay her? You charge the princess, blade in hand, but unfortunately your earlier suspicions proved correct. A blade of her own slips down her sleeve ah. and catches her neck. Blood sprays from the cut, your severed carotid artery painting the princess with strokes of red. You'd better finish your task quickly before you run out of time. Oh. Finish the job. With the last bit of your will, you press forward, sinking the blade deep into the princess's heart. Oh yeah, there's the feathers. I guess I didn't notice this before when we uh, killed, slayed the princess. Oh. The two of you collapse on the floor together, rapidly bleeding out. Somehow, I thought this would turn out a little differently, but I wonder. I don't think we've died together. Do you really think that this was enough to stop me? It's like she's convinced she can't die. But you don't have time to worry over such things. Everything goes dark and you die. The Razor. You're on a path in the woods and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. I guess we haven't done gotten to a chapter three, have we? You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Proceed to the cabin. A warning before you go any further. She will lie. He couldn't be more on the money. But we're really doing this, aren't we? I'd say you're lost, but I'm stuck here with you. 
voice of the cheated. Okay, this is a new, new voice too. We know what to look out for this time. We know to be careful. Just stay focused and you'll be fine. The interior oh, of the God. cabin is a jagged mess of warped wood and broken boards, their splintered edges as uninviting as shattered glass. The only furniture of note is a pointed table with a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Now, we like, we brought the different incarnations of the princess to the entity or whatever, right? At least that's kind of what it said in the achievements that I got. So should I go down and try to get her out and bring her to this entity? Let's approach the mirror. You walk up to the wall next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. What are you talking about? This isn't a wall. It's a mirror. Or at least it'll be a mirror once we wipe off that layer of grime. Wipe the mirror clean. You reach forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. But there was a mirror a second ago. And now it's gone. Yet another thing in here playing tricks on us. I hate this place. Okay. Okay. I think we're going to take the blade again. You take the blade from the table. It will be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. It feels a bit better to have a weapon in our hands. Let's make her hurt for what she's done to us. The door to the basement creaks open, Yikes. revealing what must once have been stairs. The fractured slats look as if they've been torn from their source and violently jammed into the wall. The air seeping up from below has an almost metallic quality to it, like the smell of fresh blood. And you can hear what sounds like the rhythmic scraping of metal coming from down below. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favor. Rhythmic scraping of metal. Scraping? She's not even trying to hide her knife. It's like she wants to get in our head. That sound could be anything. It's probably just her chains dragging across the floor. I am begging you to get out of your head. Her grating voice carries up the stairs. I hope you've come to rescue me. I've been stuck down here forever. There is something so wrong with that voice. Like echoey. Yeah. She thinks she's better than us, like she doesn't even have to put on an act this time. As you descend Whoa. the final step, the form of the princess comes into view, her sharp eyes following you from across the room. Finally, somebody! Quick, get me out of these chains! We're not safe here! Looks like the passage continues? Come on now, we're not falling for that, are we? She's trying to trick us, but she can't hide that threatening edge to her voice. She just wants us to get close, to let our guard down. If she sounds threatening, it's because her mask is already slipping. She knows why you're here. You are armed, after all. What are you waiting for? You are here to rescue me, right? What are you waiting for? If I come close to you, you're just going to stab me, aren't you? What? No! No, I wouldn't stab you. <laughs> I am just a sweet, innocent princess trapped here for no reason. And you are a brave knight who's supposed to walk up to not stabbing distance to help me. I have absolutely zero doubts that she is going to stab <laughs> us if we get close to her. She certainly feels threatening. Just because she's acting like she's going to stab you doesn't mean she has the means to actually do it. Isn't, it, isn't this game just giving you that, like, I'm really curious to see what's going to happen feel? But you know who is armed? You. So stop second guessing yourself and do your job. But maybe we have to, I guess it doesn't. We don't have to do anything. We can do what we want, right? That's but what the game's trying to get you to do. All the more reason to jump into the deep end and deal with her right now before you waste any more time getting stuck in your head. 
But I'm I'm thinking like we should try to get her out. Okay. Don't I don't have the key. Listen, we killed each other last time. I'd rather not do that again. But if we killed each other, then why are we here right now? Both of us normal and unstabbed. I do have to hand it to her, that's a very good question, and it's one with a simple answer. You haven't slain her yet. So how about you get moving? Last time? What are you talking about? Ugh, it's like the two of you are working together on this, aren't you listening to her? She's obviously lying through her teeth. I'm terrible at spotting lies, and even I can tell something's up here. <laughs> we can't be the only ones that looped back to the start, someone else has to remember, right? Yes, something is obviously up and we can all tell that she's lying. The thing she's lying about is how dangerous she is, not dimension hopping or time travel or whatever it is you think you're doing. Do you remember what happened last time? Last time? If somebody came into my house and tried to kill me and I cut his neck open and then he stabbed me in the heart and we both died looking in each other's eyes, well, surely I would remember that. But I don't remember it, so it must not have happened. <laughs> Narrator has nothing to say to that. But that's exactly what happened, so you do remember it. Would I just lie? Would I just lie to your face and tell you a thing I remembered happening didn't happen just so I could stab you again? I mean, just so I could stab you for the first time. Aha! She slipped up there. She said again, and her taking it back doesn't count. Do you hear how deranged you sound right now? Please stop dawdling, this is only going to end with violence. Postponing the inevitable is only going to make it worse for you when it actually happens. But how am I supposed to kill her if she's got a weapon? We're both honest with each other. I was sent here to stop you from ending the world, and you slashed my throat last time. <laughs> that doesn't sound like me. How many more times does she have to vaguely threaten you before you finally decide you're ready to deal with her? We're clearly still figuring out our angle. We don't have the luxury of watching this from a distance. Oh, I'm sorry, do you think I'm in a position of luxury right now? You're acting like you are. My entire world is at risk. Then maybe you should behave with a little more humility. A bit of self-deprecation would go a long way. No, I have my dignity. Fine, and we'll continue to treat you exactly how you deserve to be treated. <laughs> well, where do we go next? Turn around and leave? Play the princess. Listen, I know you have a knife. I'll let you out of here if you drop it. A knife? What are you talking about? I don't have a knife. Where would I keep a knife? And why would I stab you to death? I don't know you. You haven't given me a reason to stab you to death. It would be so silly of me to cut you open and look at your insides. Okay, I could have sworn we didn't mention stabbing anyone to death. Sounds like she's really out for blood. Fortunately for you, she isn't armed. Prove it then! Prove that you don't have a knife. It would be so much easier to prove that I do have a sharp object. I could just show it to you, but I don't have one, so I can't. The princess smiles as she pulls her hands from behind her back. I could still be back there. But look at this! Hands! Hands that don't have anything in them to stab you with! Her smile stretches into an even wider grin as she shakes her sleeves. And empty sleeves, too! Look at how few stabbing implements I have! <laughs> it's practically zero! Practically. But what if you're hiding it somewhere... secret? I've shown you all of my hiding spots. What kind of princess do you think I am? I would never hide something sharp somewhere secret. 
Wait, that sounds like I'm lying, but I'm actually not. My secret zones are for me, only they have nothing to do with you or my intention to not stab you to death the second you get close to me. Her smile drops for a moment, her expression sharp and flat. I assure you, there's nothing hidden there. I'm inclined to believe her on that one. She seems serious. Of course, but that doesn't mean that she doesn't have something hidden somewhere. We know for a fact she's armed. Okay. Okay, what are you going to do if I let you out? All sorts of things, which is why I think that's a great idea. I would love to not be chained up down here. Being chained up is so boring, and I crave fresh and new activities to broaden my horizons. Please don't let her out of here. Believe it or not, I think I'm actually with him on this. Okay, but what if all of this is just a misunderstanding? There has to be room for this to be a misunderstanding. I'd like to trust you, but you're being so suspicious right now. That's so rude of you, passing judgments on strangers you've never met just because they're different from you. How would you like it if I did that, huh? Silly little bird face thinks he's so serious ah, coming down here but doesn't know anything. Thinks he can tell me to get rid of all the knives I don't even have while he gets to wave one around right in front of me. I bet you didn't like that, did you? I bet you didn't like being judged for no reason. Well, to be fair, we came down here with a knife for the intention to kill her, so I think we could be judged. I think I've said my piece at this point. I think we all have. But if you want to keep exhausting your questions, it beats getting stabbed to death. <laughs> I don't have the key. Oh, you don't. Okay, I see. I have an idea. You should come over here and stare directly at the chains. You won't be able to find a key if you don't know what it's supposed to look like, so you better come <laughs> right within close staring distance just to be sure. Okay, I'm bored now. She's bored? That's absurd. She doesn't get to be bored. Not in a way that matters. She's a prisoner. She's... Shit. Holy shit! In a sudden burst of movement, the princess leaps towards you, a blade erupting from her free arm, her wrist limp and empty from the violent expulsion. Huh. So I guess she did have a knife of her own after all. Wait, it's like in her arm? How conciliatory of you. We appreciate it, really. Now what are we going to do? At least we're safe here. She's still in chains. And those chains stop her from continuing her advance, at least for a moment. She looks down at them with something between annoyance and confusion. She's gonna cut her arm off. And then she slices through her arm. What the hell, man? Okay, maybe we aren't safe here. She doesn't even hesitate before darting towards you with a terrifying speed you can't hope to outpace. Ah, shit. Okay, she's down an arm and we still have a weapon. I guess we'll have to use it. And use it you do. But unfortunately for you, and for the entire world, you are horribly outmatched. You keep pace with her for a single brief and wordless exchange before she severs your hand and, with it, your only line of defence. She's even better at this than she was last time. Bloody cheater. I'm going to kill you now. <laughs> okay. We had our hands in a different position, eh? Because it's sliced off. With a squelch, she does just that. Everything goes dark, and you die. Chapter 3, The Arms Race. Did we see a chapter? Maybe we did see a You're chapter 3 before. In the woods. I don't think no, we did, though. Fuck that. If we're going to have to keep doing this over and over and over again, we're not starting in that goddamn woods every time. We're starting in the fucking cabin. <laughs> What? The interior of the cabin is sharp, a constricting mess of curved and battered sheet metal pushing you towards... Wait, excuse me? What just happened? What did you just do? Oh, there's no door, it's just the mirror. I feel dizzy. Ho oh, ho ho ho! I guess I took us to the cabin, didn't I? Isn't that interesting? Who holds the cards now? The circle's getting smaller and smaller. Running isn't an option anymore. We have to fight. The hunted. 
What's the point of fighting if she's just going to win every time? It hurts being sliced to pieces. We're better off just sitting up here and doing nothing. And the broken. Great, so obviously you've already been here. How many times? This is our third? No wonder things have fallen apart. You do realize that every time you fail, she escapes and an entire world is damned to destruction, right? That can't be right, that's too much responsibility. I couldn't agree more. We couldn't be trusted with the fate of a single person, let alone the fate of the world. <sighs> Let's just stay focused, shall we? The only furniture of note is a bent metal table, a pristine blade perched. We take it. Okay, sure, you take the blade before letting me finish telling you it's there. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. This feels right. We just have to keep our senses sharp. That's right, we've got to be able to win eventually. And what if we never do? So, are you just going to stand there, or are you going to head to the basement like you're supposed to? I'd love to get started just as much as you would, but how are we supposed to get down there? You walk through the door. You do know what doors are, right? But there isn't a door, it's just that mirror again. There isn't a mirror. You only really messed things up, didn't you? It's like you can't even see reality anymore. I can feel the air coming up from behind it, stinking of iron and steel. He might be right. Could be a trick. If our other senses can't feel it, then we can't trust it. Well, approach the mirror. You make your way to the door at the end of the room, stopping just in front of it. You really must think you're looking at a mirror. Well, it doesn't exist. Just reach forward and open it. Other sigh. Let's just move it out of the way without looking. I don't want to see us. I'm sure we all look awful after dying twice. Let's just fumble for the handle and be done with it. I don't care what we look like. I care about getting to the end of this mess. Trying to wipe the mirror clean again. Oh. Oh. You reach forward and place your hand on the door to the basement. It creaks open. Maybe we can smash the mirror. And the mirror's gone. Eh, surprising. It was never there. Just an illusion. Guess it's time for us to see her again. Just stay focused and you'll be fine. So I guess we should try to fail again? You step forward, but you don't get a chance to linger on the basement stairs. <laughs> they are smooth and flat and metallic. An unintentional and unfortunately slippery ramp that quickly sends you skittering to the bottom. <laughs> Your body tumbles onto the basement floor and the form of the princess comes into view, standing at a distance. She gives you a wry smile. Hi, it looks like you don't have a way out, so I'm not going to play dumb anymore. But don't worry about how bad you did last time. That's part of the fun. Fun for her, maybe. I didn't like dying all over again. Thinking about dying makes us as good as dead. The only thing that matters is survival. Actually, does survival matter? We've died twice and nothing bad has come of it. We just need to find a way to win once. Nothing bad has come of it yet. Plenty bad has come of it. You've left at least one entire world to ruin. The people there mattered. The past isn't real. There's only here and now. Your internal bickering <laughs> is cut short by the wet sound of slicing meat. Of from the princess's arms erupt twin blades, glistening with her blood, the empty flesh of her arms flopping at her elbows like torn sleeves. The chain clatters to the floor. She's loose, and she is coming for you. You're going to make me walk over to you, aren't you? Shit. She's coming for us, and I'm out of ideas. Don't really have a lot of options with this one. We're fighting her, obviously, and we're going to appeal to her authority. Puff her up a bit. There's no reason we can't talk this out. I'm going to try flirting with her. She has swords for arms and we don't... <laughs> we don't, we're panicking. Uh, we're going to fight her and we're going to have a stiff upper lip about it. She can't hurt us if we don't let ourselves feel it. Um... That's, I think we're going to flirt. Now, I've tolerated quite a bit from you, but this is a bridge too far. Please don't try romancing the princess. She wants to kill you. She's going to end the world if you don't stop her. 
Yeah, do we have to flirt with the murderous monster? Yes! I'd rather not. It's not like she wants us anyway. I'm fine with it. Let's see where this goes. Yeah, cheated's with me. Okay, okay, gorgeous you are. Um, I feel like I really get you. I like you romantically. Even maybe we can hash this out over a date? We're giving her the look. The look. The look. We've all used it. Yeah, do you not know about the look? Even I know about the look. You flash the princess the look. And a rosy blush rushes to the Aha! princess's cheeks as she breaks into a wide grin. Ha! Unbelievable. Oh, is that how it is? Yeah, okay, I feel that. I like you too. Neat. Oh, be damned. This is actually going to work, isn't it? Still going to kill you. But now we can both enjoy a mutual romantic subtext to the murder. Or not. At least she likes us. I've never been like. Aw, broken. Blush still glowing in her cheeks. The princess closes the distance between you, blades flashing. She skewers you. Ow. What worthwhile romance doesn't hurt at least a little? <laughs> it sits what back. What matters is that she likes us. She's even said as much. Oh, a new one of us. I thought that only happens when we die. Did we die? Your Honor. No, you're in a... Where the hell are you? I think we're dead. And that's all we'll ever be. Dead, 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 dead. Stop saying dead, all of you. We might have died a second ago, but right now we're extremely not dead. This is all horribly wrong. How many times have you been here? This is four. No wonder everything's such a mess. This wasn't supposed to go past one. I wonder what you're going to do next. You're so full of ideas, and I love that. <laughs> the smile. But I guess we don't have time to talk about things before the princess advances. Okay. Whatever we do gets us another... us. Let's see how many we can stack. There's got to be a point where it makes us better than her. As long as we keep moving. We'll win her heart eventually. Oh, great. So it's going to get even more crowded. Even more deluded voices that think we might stand any kind of chance. Come on, show me something new. Okay, well, we haven't... I guess we did fight her. The authority? Okay, I think of something better. It doesn't work, and she kills you again, and again, and again, and again. Your memory blurs as your consciousness leaps from life to life to life, holding only snippets of the conflict that transpires. None of this is working. Think. Think. She skewers you. Well, there's more of us. Let's see if that helps. We just have to hit her harder. She skewers you. You'll have to be trickier than that. And then you skewer yourself. Well, how many points does she have? I thought we both understood that dying doesn't get you anywhere. Huh, that didn't do much of anything. We're tougher than I thought. The contrarian. Just panic, flee. Paranoid. She skewers you. No, you don't get to escape. That's not how this works. It doesn't matter how many times this takes, we can't give up. <sighs> okay, let's go again. She's going to kill this body either way. This is just so more and more blades. What it feels. The cold. She skewers you. Ooh, not bad. Real tough. See? We're getting better. Okay, okay, yeah. That was a good one. Let's appeal to her better nature. We haven't tried that. I'm sure she'll listen to reason. The opportunist. She skewers you. We're getting close to something, can't you feel it? One last time. You're right. One last time, that's all we need. And then everything goes dark, and you die. Mutually assured destruction. 
or mad. Your Honor, don't lose your head. We're in a cabin and we'll take it from here. Everything feels like it finally fits, doesn't it? We're up here which is different, and different is good. And our steel claw is already in our hand. Oh, what if we throw it out the window? Over my dead body. <laughs> that won't be very hard. We've died a lot. But I can't say I mind anymore. It's just how we live now, by dying. Besides, what better way to die so very many times than at the sharp hands of a beautiful woman? Okay, Smitten's my favorite. Who, who's your favorite, guys? Who's your favorite voice? I'm sure I can think of a better way to die. Eh, they're all the same, really. How about we stop thinking about horrible ways to die? I don't want us to accidentally manifest anything. It's really reminding me of Monty Python now, though. The only thing we're going to manifest is finally ending up on top. There are entirely too many of you. How many times have you been here? This isn't good. This is... Yeah, oh. leave it to the pros. We'll notch up that win in no time. I skipped one by accident. How about you stick to describing things and we'll stick to doing them? That's the voice of the cheated. Okay. Narrator, we heroically stride through the door and towards our destined final encounter with our star-crossed lover. Fine by me. You walk to the door and onto the basement stairs, only... It's fine. I'll just shut up then and speed this whole thing along. Oh, I miss... More of a slide, we know. <laughs> Are you sure you don't want me to describe the stairs? Or this room, or anything? It feels like I'm hardly a part of this. Don't care. Just want to win. Fine. You make your way to the basement, where the princess awaits you. You know, this last time I killed you, and you didn't pop right back up again? I thought I'd actually done it. I thought I'd cut you into so many pieces, you just weren't able to stitch yourself back together. But I guess we're not done. That's okay with me. It's good, even. I like that. I got something ready for you while you were gone. Do you want to see it? I'm not going to wait for an answer. I'm just going to show you. It's worth it, though. Just you wait, and not for very long, because I'm going to do it right now. Do, do, do. Ba, ba, ba. Hmm. Oh, I thought there'd be more. Are you going to say what she does? Uh, oh, do, do you want me to talk now? Well, yeah, she says she has something new. I want to hear about the new thing. Yeah, me too. I think I speak for all of us when I say that I would like to hear you describe her new thing. Really? Okay then. Here we go, now. The princess's skin twists, splitting into red blooms of raw meat as it stretches and tears. Then it erupts. She becomes a wave of blood and viscera, pieces of her splattering against the walls. All that remains in the center of the room is a skeleton of blades. A heart beats furiously in its cage of a chest. The people that made this game need help. Are you ready for what comes next? Holy shit! She's gorgeous. <laughs> Absolutely divine. Yes! Behold, the Star perfect. Starver loves her too. Do you think we can throw her out the window? <laughs> that looked painful. How is she still alive? Hearts still beating, that's all she needs. This is fake, this is all fake. That's all just made up. That's her, that's her uh, weak area. We need to get to that. She doesn't even have a back anymore. How are we supposed to stab her in it? This is all just a sick joke. I hate existing. We're screwed. I, I quit. I'm done. Forget it. What just happened? It's so quiet. Oh, we're empty air mind. Him too. Something feels different about you. 
It almost makes me feel different, like I should actually take this seriously for once. You do not act, and yet, through that inaction, your body moves on its own. The princess strikes as you approach, but as her blow finishes its arc, you're already somewhere else. You're incredible. Your weapons clash again and again, you and her entering a rhythm free of thought and free of self. There is only the dance, the ebb and flow, the shifting of the tides back and forth between you. The deeper you fall into your play, the faster your hearts pound and the faster the momentum volleys between you. An endlessly building crescendo, and then an opening. Your blade strikes free of volition, and her strikes too. Both strikes are lethal. Neither of you will survive, but neither of you fear what's to come. This is a good ending. You did not get to see each other die, nor will you ever. It's time for you to leave. Memory returns. You do so. Gaze to your reflection. Silence as you reach towards the glass. It's time for you to see what's in it. We wither decay. Oh, shoot. Find yourself in the long quiet once again. Proceed to the cabin. You're at the cabin. Approach her. I am a growing chorus of contradiction. A mass of tides ebbing and flowing all at once in more directions than my attention can bear to hold. To look at any one is to shift them all into something new. And to look away is to reshape them yet again. All of me is changing, and yet the rest of me is still the same. Okay, hmm. You can't be a contradiction, contradictions don't exist. And yet my waters flow and my streets bustle. There are no words that can describe me into non-existence. There is no logic that can bind my multitudes. I am everything that you have known me to be, but I am also none of it. Okay. Doesn't matter how many times I go back, at least one of us always hurts the other. Doesn't that change you? Doesn't that make you worse? It changes me, but it doesn't make me worse, nor does it make me care for you any less. Does it make you worse? Do you resent me? If anything, it makes me like you more. I don't know what that says about me. It says that your heart is gentle. That even in the darkness, you are guided by compassion. Okay. I asked her about this stuff before. Do you still not care what I bring you next? I care about your gifts, but I have no preferences to burden you with. Even if I did, I would never dare to tarnish our relationship by assuming myself above you. Okay. What do you think of this vessel? This one is sharp and single-minded. She is cruelty, but she is also joy. She will make for an indomitable heart. Do not mourn her. She is exactly where she needs to be. How can you stand to be a contradiction? As easily as you can stand to be you. You are like me, 
Even if you have chosen not to look at the corners of you that do not fit. Even if you have chosen to ignore the brilliant contours of your soul. Okay, I'm not gonna, I, I don't really wanna kill them. How many more vessels do I need to bring you? We will know when we near our destination. Okay. Have you figured out what you'll want when we finished? The desires of my multitude thrive in endless competition with themselves, but none of them rise above their dance to influence me. So vague. I yearn for what I have always yearned for, our awakening. Other desires shrink in the light of knowing you and knowing me. Do you know what happens to the worlds we leave behind? My perspectives are shadowed. You have seen what I have seen, just as I have seen what you have seen. The angles of my vantage do not offer me hidden truths, and my attention is turned inward, except when you are here with me. Perhaps this will change when our work is done. Okay. I'm ready to go back. I will be here when it is time for us to meet again. What the hell is going to happen next time? Everything goes dark and you die. Bring the razor full to her. You're on a path in the woods. And at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. What is going to happen this time? Let's find You're out. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. I guess there's not really anything new to talk about. What if we what if we turn around? Seriously? You're just going to turn around and leave. Do you even know where you're going? We did this before, but then we turned around and like left. The only thing that matters is where I'm not going. The cabin. I'm not going to the cabin. Fine. I suppose you just quietly continue down the path away from the cabin. Good. What we're being asked to do here is wrong. Better to wash our hands of this whole situation than to take part in it. Ignore that annoying little voice. He doesn't know what he's talking about. That's strange. It looks like this path also leads to the cabin. How convenient. Everything's back on track again. Maybe the world can still be saved after all. Because I did this before, but I just kept leaving. What if we continue out of the cabin from here? Okay, okay, I'm going into the cabin. Sheesh. That's great to hear. As long as you bring that fiery attitude to princess slaying, I think this will all resolve splendidly. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. Don't believe her lies. Fortunately, she's only a princess, whereas you are a valiant and talented warrior. I don't know about that. It'll be easy, so long as you stay focused. I am focused, though. We can't just go through with this and listen to him. She's a princess. We're supposed to save princesses, not slay them. We're going in. Is it going to be normal or is it going to be really different this time? I don't I don't know. The interior normal. of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer. The blade is yeah, your seen, implement. We've seen all this before. I'm just going to hmm. We took the blade last time. Let's just enter. The door to the basement creaks open revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. 
Her voice softly carries up the stairs. Hello? Is someone there? It's hypnotizing. It's the kind of voice you only have to hear once to remember it for the rest of your life. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. You're playing a dangerous game by coming here unarmed. Okay. Continue down the stairs. Good. You're still listening to reason. It would be better if you had a weapon, but you may still be able to do what needs to be done. We're just going to be the strong silent type. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's beautiful. How could someone like this be a threat to anyone? I am begging you to stay focused. There's a lot riding on you here. Focus. Hi. Do you think you can get me out of these chains? I'll see what I can do. You're only making this more difficult. Thank you. Thank you. You're making a huge Is she mistake. just going to kill us? No. You're doing the right thing. You walk up to the chains binding the princess to the wall and give them a tug. They're large and heavy, far too solid for you to even imagine trying to break them apart. I can imagine it. I'm guessing you don't have the key? Maybe it's somewhere upstairs. Doubtful. Whoever locked the princess away down here intended for her to never see the light of day. They wouldn't have just left the key to her chains somewhere in the cabin. Well, if they intended for her not to see the light of day, they wouldn't have put a window. Okay. Okay. If there isn't a key, do you have it? Hmm. I, okay, we. I think we've gone to check and she's killed us, right? I, hmm. We've asked for other ideas with the dagger, and she cut her arm off. Maybe we just absolutely trust her. I'm going to check upstairs. Maybe the key's still lying around somewhere up there. And if not, maybe I can at least find something to break you free. Okay. I'll be here. Good luck. Things will probably play out differently this time, right? Because I think that's the way the game works. You attempt to make your way out of the basement, but the door oh, right, at the it top gets, of the stairs oh, right. is shut. They lock you hear us the in. Of a lock sliding into place. Is someone else here? Turn to the bottom of the stairs. You make your way to the bottom of the stairs. This would have been so much easier if you'd just taken the blade like you were supposed to. Easier for whom? Easier for everyone. Look at the mess you're in. I heard the door slam. They locked you down here too, didn't they? There's a slight panic rising in the princess's voice. If I could just get out of these chains, I know we could force our way out of here together. Oh, she right, she bites it. Before raising her okay. arm to her mouth, Forgot her teeth this tearing part. through her limb with the determination of a trapped wolf. As she rips her flesh from her bone, a sound comes from behind you. The clang of bouncing. Oh, back. yeah. Okay, so it is repeating itself. It's the blade from upstairs. You're not sure how it made its way down here, but if there's a time to strike, it's now. Or we could use it to free her. You won't like what happens if you do that. What if we slay her this? Did we. Last time, did we save or slay? I feel. I'm trying to, like, keep things balanced a little bit. I think last time we were in this situation, we saved, right? I'm gonna slay. Without hesitation, you bring the blade down and plunge it into the princess's back. Finally. The wound drives her to the ground. Yeah, I think this is different. Okay. There's no going back now. I'm with you to the end. You, you bastard. Were you lying to me this whole time? The princess pushes away from you, the motion ripping the blade from her back. 
wounded but still alive, she crouches on all fours in the corner of the room and meets your eyes with the ferocity of a cornered predator. You've made a terrible enemy, and there's nothing in the world that can possibly save you from me. Okay. I thought we had the upper hand, but it's as if she's barely even threatened by us. It's an act. She's wounded and unarmed. There's nothing she can do to hurt you. I'm not so sure. Don't waver now. As you ready your blades to deliver a lethal blow, she lunges at your legs with the same animal ferocity she used to tear at her arm. Your knife cuts into her again and again oh as you're tackled to the ground, your body racked with pain as she rips into you with tooth and claw. Forget about trying to rescue her. This is about survival now. Give her everything you've got. They don't have a choice. Though your nerves are seizing with pain, you know you've done your fair share of damage as well, your blade having left deep gashes in the princess's back. You seize a moment of hesitation to throw her off of you and shakily push yourself back to your knees. We can still turn this around. Huh. Hmm. She'll chase at. Mm. It do, I, I'm thinking a lot about this. It really doesn't matter, though, right? Whatever we pick is fine. But what do I want to do here? Let's give up. Are you serious? As what's left of your blood pulls Psych around out. you on the cobblestone floor, the blade falls from your trembling hands and clatters uselessly against the ground. I suppose you simply lacked the will to finish the job. The princess, wounded but still gonna alive, do? nervously jumps at the blade and kicks it far away from you before retreating into a dark corner. Oh, okay. Okay. Her shining eyes watch you from the darkness, unblinking and curious as you bleed out. We can only hope the wounds you managed to inflict will be enough to at least delay her escape from this place. If we're very lucky, They'll kill her before she can reach the outside world. After all this time alone, I thought I'd finally found a friend. But you were just another monster, weren't you? Just another monster. We still haven't found out, like, how she ended up here, right? This is the end, isn't it? Before you can answer, everything goes dark <laughs> and you die. Oops. Oh, great. We created a beast. You're on a path in the woods. And at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Okay. Yeah. A warning. She will lie... Does yeah, a cat yeah, yeah. lie to a cornered mouse when it plays with its freedom? Or is it just acting out its nature? The hunted. I don't see why that matters. A lie's a lie, and if anything, she's the one who's cornered. She could have gotten out of there whenever she wanted to. We should trust nothing that she tells us, only what we hear and smell. That's a very roundabout way of saying that you should listen to me and take this seriously. Maybe. It seems like when we sh attack her, she the next phase is the like the of the cabin is ruinous and dilapidated. It feels like violent. No lived here for a long time. If we try to Wind free her, it's nicer, but she still seems to walls. try to kill us. The only furniture of note is a termite-eaten table with a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Okay. Let's go to the mirror again. You walk up to the wall next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much- What are you talking about? This isn't a wall. It's a mirror. Or at least it'll be a mirror once we wipe off that layer of grime. Doesn't seem like that Reach ever forward works. And rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. But there was a mirror a second ago, and now it's gone. Okay. 
Let's go without the blade. No steel claw. Do you think we can talk our way out of this? I don't think she wants to Maybe talk. we can turn this around. I guess we'll just have to trust that we made the right call. It'll still be here if we need it. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing what's left of an old wooden staircase. It's still sturdy enough that you can make your way down in one piece, though you'll have to be mindful of holes. The air seeping up from below is oddly warm and wet, as if you're descending into a jungle. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favor. She growls up the stairs. I can smell you. Okay. She sounds almost feral, impatient, or maybe eager. You carefully make your way down the stairs. The last step gives way to the oh, damp cool. earth floor of a starlit pit. The walls are obscured by an impenetrable darkness, giving the illusion that the room might stretch on forever. You brush against the wide leaves of plants that surround you on all sides, seemingly the only living things that occupy this strange underground wilderness. The jungle is pressing in on us, hiding her from view. She could be anywhere. I think she's over there. You see only a flash of the princess before she scurries away into the underbrush, dragging her heavy chain behind her. Remember, she's just a princess. She is certainly not just a princess. You're not helping. It doesn't matter what she is. It only matters what she does. Her shining eyes appear between the leaves, oh. staring hungrily at you from the darkness. I can hear your heart pounding from the bottom of the stairs, fledgling. You're right to be terrified. I'm so much more than you. A shiver rushes up your spine and pulls you upright. The air's shifting. She's getting ready to pounce. Move, now. Um, okay. We don't have to kill each other, you know that, right? There's a shift in the humid air, and something enormous princess, lunges from the shadows, her maw unhinged and dripping, her eyes fierce and full of hunger. Maybe that was the wrong choice. There are no wrong choices. She is too quick to outrun, too nimble to outmaneuver, too determined to overpower. Okay. This is her domain. You are devoured. Okay, okay. I guess we couldn't talk it out. I guess that's it then. Isn't it? Unfortunately for you, no, this isn't it. You are in a dark, no. caustic place. <laughs> a thick, fibrous lining constricts around you, its slick surface impossible to grip. Your hands scrabbling uselessly at your surroundings as they compress in on you. Your lungs can barely expand in such a tiny space. Not that the humid, finite air grants you more than a few shallow breaths at a time. She swallowed us whole? You spoke when you needed to act. The liquid pooling beneath you starts to seep oh. into your skin. You itch, then sting, then burn as the acid begins its slow work. When I killed you, I tried to leave this place, but it wouldn't let me. You belong down there, it screamed. Ah. The world is better off without you in it. The flesh around you rumbles as the princess begins to move, her thundering footfalls twisting you helplessly about. Your skin protests as the corrosive liquid sloshes around you, but there will be no respite for you in sight. The burning grows stronger, and you can feel layers of you being peeled away. But you, you don't belong down here. You came from somewhere else. You came from out there. So I consumed your dead heart, and I carried it in my throat, and I draped what was left of you on my back, and I threw myself against that door. Jeez, man. She stops, her muscles tensing around you, and through the muffling layers of her flesh, you hear the whine of straining metal. And with a pop, she lurches forward, your body lurching right along with her. Her chains, she's loose. But even then, it denied me freedom. You cannot fool me by draping yourself in decay. 
I know your true nature, and it is suffering. Is that the narrator? Gravity pulls at you as you're hefted upwards, the distant creaking of ancient wooden steps barely audible over the thudding of the princess's heart. And then it was gone, and I was here. A new enclosure, a nicer cage, but still a prison. I learn from my wounds. You're alive now. We can leave together. Does that work? Could she free herself if we're alive in here? Do you really need me to give you a definitive answer for you to understand that the situation is grim? <laughs> Stop her. Do something. Um... We don't have steel, but we have tooth and claw. Tear through her before we are her. Can you talk to the cabin? I understand it, and it understands me. Talking is for those who don't know how to listen. Fair. You know, you could have asked me before swallowing me alive. I acted on my will, fledgling, and you acted on yours. The strong triumph, and the weak submit or perish. Your body is violently jostled, the disruption causing burning skin to slop from raw muscle, and you hear what you can only assume is the princess pulling against the door to the cabin. The cage is still locked. I don't think we can talk our way out of this. We are drowning in death. There's no more space for words. Yikes! Um, you can leave. Just let me go. Oh, can I? The click of what you presume to be a door ripples through the layers of suffocating flesh. That wasn't so hard. You feel her take another massive step, and then another, and then... Free a creature under massive duress. And then... It's gone quiet, hasn't it? You can feel a churning in the forms around you, and then a wet tunneling before you're ejected to a place that is nowhere at all. I guess I don't need you to be a part of me. How lucky for you. What the fuck? This place is cold. Before you can say anything to her, she's gone. Memory returns. She's gone? Where did she go? Should we try and find her? And there's that mirror again. Why is it here? Why now? Approach the mirror. Done this before. Gaze into our reflection. Silence as you reach forward. They're gone once again. The mirror always makes them leave, but you need to see what's in it. We're un we've unraveled. You find yourself in the long quiet once again. You're at the cabin. That was a quick one. There's a world beyond the endless walls of the long quiet. We're supposed to be there. Do you know what we'll find out there? There's trees and stars and there are people, I think. At least there are supposed to be people. Um, hmm. Yeah. There is a warmth and sadness in me at the thought of people. Fresh tears on a winter's day. They are not like us. They do not last. Hmm. Do you think that anything is real out there? Do you think we're real? We are real. Nothing is an idea that dwells in the absence of something. But nothing cannot exist on its own. And because of True. that, nothing can't exist. Okay. Do you have thoughts on this vessel? This one is consumed by instinct. 
a predator pushing those around her to adapt. She will make for a bold heart. She wishes me to devour you, to make you a part of myself, but she is only a voice. Do not mourn her, for she is part of something greater. Uh, yeah, I, I get that. We're like building. Is it like the way that you play the game builds this thing that we're talking to? When you send me back, I'm not alone. There are voices that speak to me. Some of them are me. But one of them is something else. I call him the narrator and he wants me to kill you. Do you have a narrator? Have, have the vessels had one? No, their thoughts are quiet. Do you think your narrator lives in the spaces beyond? Mm. Sometimes, sometimes he s says he doesn't remember, but he does seem to know a lot about what's going on. does but I don't know why but I know this for a fact I am on the cusp of my awakening perhaps you are on the cusp of yours do you know what's going to happen when you awaken if I did I would already be awake how many more vessels do I need to bring you one oh whatever you bring me next will be enough and then gravity will pull the others back to me I will be singular. A final multitude. Okay. I'm just gonna stay here with you. Interesting. Let's try that. If this is the last stage before your completion, then I'm not going back. I'm just gonna stay here. You've already tried waiting. Oh, right. But I understand if you need more time. Oh, yeah. I'll wait with you. <laughs> we did that before. All right. No waiting forever. Is there anything you'd like me to bring you? These gifts are a conversation, and each one shows me the contours of your heart. The only thing I want to see is what you choose for <laughs> me when the thread is fully drawn. We kind of got in a pretty, like, dark direction. <laughs> Okay, I'm ready. The next time I see you, each of us will finally know what we are. We're both growing together. I will be here, waiting for you. Everything goes dark and you die. Okay, okay. The beast. You're on a path in the woods. And at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Let's see what kind of mess we create this time. Okay. I don't you know if we're supposed to like short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. Can we turn her into the narrator? A warning before you go any further. She will lie. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The blade is your implant. Okay, well, we'll um, let's go and we'll take the blade. You take the blade from the table. It'd be rather difficult to slay the princess and save the world without it. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the I think, room I think below. We've seen this before. Her voice carries up the stairs. Who's there? She sounds dangerous. It's almost as if she's the one in charge down here. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. Oh, we don't have the option to say we're here to save you. Good. You're still listening to reason. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. 
There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's so coldly beautiful. Is she really a threat to the world? Focus on the task at hand. And there you are. Are you here to kill me or something? Ooh, going, going back to the beginning, I haven't decided yet. I haven't decided yet. How about you drop the knife and the two of us just talk? Look how reasonable she's being. We should just drop the blade and talk things out. Don't you dare. It's fine. We can decide what we want to do after we talk to her. Maybe she really is a monster, but killing someone in cold blood isn't very becoming of us. Drop it. <sighs> the blade tumbles out of your trembling hands and drops to the floor with an unceremonious clang. Thank you. Against your better judgment, you step forward to speak with the princess face to face. This is kind of the path that we took Unarmed. originally. We'll be fine. We'll see if we can come up with a different outcome. I think you have to. I don't right. know what you're hoping to accomplish here, but I can assure you there's no reasoning with her. <sighs> Just make sure you don't forget about the blade on the floor. You're going to need it. Okay. So here we are. What an awkward start to a relationship. What's your name? She hesitates before answering. You can address me as your royal highness, or her majesty. Any honorific should do, really. Note the lack of detail. You can't trust her. Yeah, it's, uh, pretty awkward. I know. I just said that. Now why are you here to kill me? Do you know why I'm here to kill you? <laughs> that laugh. I think I'm in love. Stop it. I have no idea. To be honest, I don't even know why I'm down here or how I got here. I was kind of hoping you might be able to shed some light on the whole situation. Okay. How long have you been down here? Too long. Again, she offers no specifics. No matter how hard you try, you'll never get a straight answer out of her. <laughs> Do you know why I'm here to kill you? <laughs> did, did I already ask that? Um, there's people out there who think you're going to end the world. What do you have to say about that? Don't just tell her that. <laughs> Is that why they threw me down here? But I don't want to hurt anyone. I like the world, I think. I don't remember much about it, to be honest. I've been down here a long time. Just how long has she been down here? If I'm supposed to be capable of ending the world, then how did I wind up here, chained to a wall? Have they told you why I'm allegedly so... Dangerous. Hmm. I was hoping you'd tell me. Ending the world seems like an awful lot for just one person to do. I wouldn't even know where to start. I believe her. She doesn't have to know how to destroy the world to be capable of doing it. At the end of the day, whatever the two of us have going on down here is about trust. Whoever sent you to slay me claimed I was a threat to the world, but they didn't tell you why. That doesn't sound right to me. And I don't think it sounds right to you either. Otherwise we'd be killing each other instead of talking. She has a point. There's a reason I've been telling you to question the situation and there's a reason you've listened. So, 
I could tell you that I'd lead a quiet life in the woods, or that I'd open an orphanage, or that I'd do any other number of good things that I'm sure you think you want to hear. But you don't really know me, do you? What can my word possibly be worth in a situation like this? She's right about one thing. Make a lot of sense. Her word isn't worth anything. Like I said, it's all about trust. Blind trust. So do you trust me, the prisoner, the victim, the princess clearly incapable of ending the world? Or do you trust whoever put me here? She's wrong. This isn't about <laughs> trust. This is about risk. We stand to lose everything. All for the sake of one person. And a subjugating monarch, no less. How would I get you out of here? You can't. Don't bother. I'm guessing you don't have the key then. I'm sure there's a key somewhere around here, and if there isn't... Well, we can always put that knife to good use. Her sharp eyes settle on the edge of the blade. She isn't suggesting what I think she's suggesting, right? She is. I'm sure of this it. This played out like the first time. Okay, we've talked enough. Oh, have you decided what to do with me? You know why you're here. So I think when I did this, I ended up being locked up with her. I'm going to get her out of here. Oh, you have to be kidding me. You walk up to the chains binding the princess to the wall and give them a tug. They're large and heavy, far too solid for you to even imagine trying to break them apart. If you don't have the key, maybe you should go looking for it. I'm sure it's somewhere upstairs. Doubtful. Whoever locked the princess away down here intended for her to never see the light of day. They wouldn't have just left the key to her chains somewhere in the cabin. And if there isn't a key, do you have any ideas besides me cutting you out of here? That would be fine. I can lose an arm. She speaks with almost complete nonchalance. If we were stuck down here for long enough, I'm sure we'd be nonchalant about cutting our way out. Anything to finally be free. You attempt to make your way out of the basement, but the door at the top of the stairs slams shut. You hear the click of a lock sliding into place. Is someone else here? Okay. Try the door. You try the door, but it's locked from the outside. You're here to slay the princess, and you won't leave until the task is done. Return. You make your way back to the bottom of the stairs. This would have been so much easier if you'd simply slain her like you were supposed to. Easier for whom? Easier for everyone. I heard the door slam. They locked you down here too, didn't they? The knife. Pick it up and cut me out of here. You won't like what happens if you do that. Save the princess. Against your better judgment, you place the blade against the princess's arm, just above the massive, unyielding chain. You cut into her flesh. The blade is sharp, and you make quick work of it. Before long, you're able to crack through bone, and she pulls the bleeding stub of her arm through the iron gauntlet. She didn't so much as utter a sound. Free from her bindings, the princess turns to face you, her fierce gaze meeting your eye. Okay, what's gonna happen? How is she so composed after losing an arm? It's like she isn't even bothered by it. Thank you. Now let's get out of here. Approach the locked door. No, we won't have any of that. The stakes are too high. All right. You can't just let her escape into the world. We end up not being able to control I ourselves. just can't let her escape into the world. As the princess approaches the bottom stair, your body steps forward and raises the blade. Wait, this isn't fair. You can't just do that. Watch me. We're gonna, we're gonna warn. I can't warn her. Oh, because we, we did this before. Oh, that's interesting. You bring the. I have down, to do it. Plunge it into the princess's back. Finally, okay. 
There's no going back now. Though the blade left a deep gash in her shoulder, she barely so much as flinches, turning around to stare at you incredulously. Are you serious? I don't know what came over you, but if we're doing this, I guess I'll have to kill you. Do you think I need both of my arms to do that? I can beat you to death with <laughs> one. But I don't have to tell you that. I'll go ahead and show you. Give up. <sighs> As the blade falls from the <laughs> trembling the, final hand, side. the princess rears back, readying a bone-shattering haymaker. You fall to your knees, barely able to process the ringing in your ears before she hits you again. Every blow is as punishing as the first. You feel bones shatter with every impact, unknown ruptures blossoming with blood somewhere inside of you. So I guess it really starts with whether or not you take the knife downstairs. If we're lucky, the wound you manage to inflict will be enough to at least delay her escape from this place. If we're very lucky, it will kill her before she gets out. Oh, too weak to even try fighting back. How disappointing. She places a confident heel on your chest and pushes you down to the ground. Her knee falls to your throat, your windpipe crushed beneath a weight you didn't think her slight form could possibly possess. It can't just end like this, right? And we die. I'm sorry, but it's over. Everything goes dark. And you die. Tower. You're on a path in Tower. the woods. And at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Okay. She's going to kill me again. Again? People don't die twice. You haven't even met the princess, and I hardly think she'd be capable of killing someone as skilled and courageous as yourself. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. You know I can hear you, right? It's going to be a lot harder than you think to keep secrets from me. What does it matter what he knows? The broken. There's nothing we can do to stop her. She's just going to kill us again. She is not going to kill you unless you let her. But slaying the princess and saving the world is going to be much more difficult than it has to be if you spend the whole time second-guessing yourself. Let's assume I'm telling the truth and all this really did already happen. Why should I listen to you? Why should I bother doing anything? Those are two very different questions, but fine. I'll indulge you if that's what it takes to get you moving. Let's say for a moment that this really is the second time you've met me, or at least a version of me. You died last time, which probably only happened because you didn't listen to me. Of course we died. She didn't feel pain. She didn't feel much of anything, did she? And she broke every bone in our body before she decided to let us die. What were we supposed to do to stop her then? What are we supposed to do to stop her now? It's pointless. She's just a princess. Slaying her shouldn't have been difficult, but congratulations. You've been given another chance to actually do this right. And I believe your other question was something along the lines of, Oh, what's the point of doing anything? <laughs> if you're asking that, it sounds to me like you're making the rather dangerous assumption that your actions last time around didn't have any consequences. What do you mean? Of course there weren't any consequences. The princess killed us and now everyone's right back where they started. That sounds pretty consequence-free to me. Yes, but in this purely hypothetical scenario, that begs the question of how you got back here. Did time simply rewind itself, or were you instead transported to a different world entirely? If it's the latter, what do you think happened after you died? Do you think the people there lived happily ever after? Or do you think that the princess, left unhindered, brought about the end to everyone and everything, just like I told you she would? If she ended the entire world, why should we even bother? We might as well just walk up to that cabin, break her chains, and let her do whatever she wants. It's all the same in the end. Just because she's capable of ending the world doesn't mean you're not capable of slaying her. Both of those things can be true at the same time. So chin up, 
I believe in you. Let's talk about this princess. Just be quick about it. Uh... Who locked her in this basement? What is this place? People locked her in that basement, and I told you what this place is. It's a path in the woods. Don't overcomplicate I'm interested things. in engaging the narrator more this time. Okay, to quote you from last time around, she's just a princess. Why was she strong enough to beat me to death with her bare hands? She is just a princess. Whatever you think happened to you last time, just get it out of your head before you get to the cabin and you'll be fine. Or we could pledge ourselves to her and stop pretending that we're capable of doing anything in this situation. She probably doesn't even need to try to overpower us. I'm with Broken. Can we tone down the pessimism just a smidge? I'm not being a pessimist. I'm just being realistic. You're being annoying. Just ignore their bickering and whatever you do, don't pledge yourself to her. I cannot stress enough how absolutely catastrophic that would be for everyone, yourself included. Okay. You're being cagey. What aren't you telling me? I've told you everything you need to know. Going into more detail will just yeah, overcomplicate no, this an otherwise very simple situation and make your job more difficult. The less you know about her, the better. People locked her away. Uh, why couldn't they slay her? Why is this falling on me? Look, I'm not supposed to oh, right, say right, this, right, right, right. but it's because you're special. You're the only person capable of doing this. Call it a prophecy, if that helps. But it's just the way things are. Oh. I didn't know we were special. Of course you're special. Why else would you be here? Who cares if you think we're special? As far as I can tell, the only thing special about us is that we get to experience painfully dying all over again. She killed me last time around. How can I make sure that doesn't happen again? Like I said, if she killed you, it was probably because you didn't listen to me. Don't talk to her. Don't trust her. Just go in, do your job, and save the world. Great. Now, if you don't mind, the whole world is waiting with bated breath for you to save it from ruin. Turn around. A warning. She will lie. Yeah. Lying? Cheating? Why would she even bother? She didn't need to do anything like that last time. She caught us off guard last time. We'll be fine. Let's just keep our wits about us. At least one of you still has a shred of sense. Just make sure you listen to him and not that whiner. If that's what you want, I guess I don't have a say here. We're gonna listen to Broken, I guess. The interior of the cabin is oh, larger and more grandiose than its humble exterior would suggest. <laughs> the only furniture of note is a massive marble altar with a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Why do we feel so small? We don't feel small. We are small. This whole cabin is different than last time. Maybe that's because you haven't actually been here. I hope this means you'll finally drop that ridiculous past life nonsense. You haven't died, and you certainly haven't been killed by the princess. Enter the basement. No blade this time. Yeah. Maybe she'll be more receptive if we're unarmed. Blade. No blade. It doesn't matter. Are we gonna go up or down? <laughs> Be kind of funny if we went down. Creaks open, or up, sorry. a spiral staircase. It steps almost as deep as you are tall. The smell of incense drifts up from below. For a moment, you almost feel at ease. Huh. This is actually kind of nice. It's still a stone basement. If the princess lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her booming voice rolls up the stairs. Is that a guest I hear? Don't linger on the stairs. Come down and witness me. Oh, damn. You weren't 
kidding when you said it was booming? She wasn't like this last time. You shouldn't have come down here unarmed. We need to get down there. She wants us to see her. We need to see her. Should we be worried about your sudden change in attitude? Just a few minutes ago, you were going on about how pointless everything was. Now you want to go down there. It's a render to her. It doesn't matter what that little voice says. He's not the one making the decisions. Though if his ramblings get you to the princess, they get you to the princess. Making your way down the spiral staircase is a time-consuming and exhausting effort. <laughs> every step requiring you to clamber over one edge before dropping to the next. Because we're so small. But soon the end comes into view, and you tumble to the bottom, entering the vast, temple-like room beyond. She's going to be gigantic, right? The princess towers over you, Damn. almost glowing in the weak starlight, her figure framed by a stained-glass window. Her long hair billows around her, and a chain binds her wrist to the far wall. The chain is nothing to her. It might as well be a toy for all the good it would do. I told you it was pointless to resist her. The little bird has returned to me. I wonder what he wants. I see your hands are empty. You've already given up, haven't you? You aren't even going to try and kill me. How sweet. And more than a little disappointing. She's disappointed in us? Kneel. Kneel. On her command, you fall to the floor, knees painfully connecting with hard stone. That's my good little bird. Now, why don't we talk? Can't even, like, see the top of her crown. The last time we met, you told me I was destined to end the world. That thought wrapped itself around my heart. It has pulled at me since the moment I squeezed the life out of your broken lungs. I could feel its fundamental truth awaken me. The collapse of the old is a necessary prelude to the birth of the new. And the world as it is now is overdue for... alterations. It's time for me to seize my destiny. <laughs> and you, little bird, will help me seize it. Well, that gives away the game, doesn't it? It certainly does. And beyond that, it more than lends credence to our conversation in the woods. I don't love the thought that in some other reality you failed to destroy her, but what's done is done. I can only hope it helped you learn a valuable lesson. You are the only one who can deal with her. And if you don't... Well, she's let you know what will happen, hasn't she? Then you shouldn't have trusted us with her destruction. She is inevitable. Can't you feel it? He's being melodramatic, but he's not exactly wrong, is he? What are we supposed to do to stop her? <sighs> okay. First things first, you're going to have to stuff those pessimistic thoughts someplace far, far away and commit yourself to what needs to be done. The stakes of the situation should be perfectly clear to everyone now. And if you're going to save the world, you have to have faith that you can pull this off. You can't win a battle that you've already lost in your mind. Okay. Uh, I have, I have questions for you before I decide to do anything. Know the limits of your privilege, little bird. There is an empty place at my side for you to fill, if you'll have it. But it is not a place for an equal. It is a place for something worthy to be kept. A priest, perhaps. Or a pet. What would you have me do? What what do you have planned? And all you have to do is break these chains and set me free. If you're so powerful, can't you just break the chains yourself? Don't be rude. Of course she can. It's not rude to question someone who's apparently trying to end the world. That's exactly why it's rude. We should know our I can, easily, but that isn't what I want to do. 
The story of a terrible and bountiful god unbounded of her own will is no story at all. It's not worthy of everything I am, or everything I'm bound to become. It isn't even worthy of what I was. The destruction in Genesis that's to follow in my wake is deserving of a song that can echo for eternity. The song of you being so struck by my glory, so overwhelmed by what I am, that you feel you must deliver me into the world. And from your act of utter devotion and submission, springs a new dawn, a better dawn. Submit now, submit later. It makes no difference. Because in the end, no matter how vainly you struggle against me, my will triumphs over yours. Listen, just because you're supposed to end the world doesn't mean you actually have to do it. You could be whatever you want to be. This isn't about desire. This is about what I am. And I have little interest in discussing destiny with one that cannot see the divine truth that shines in my heart. I'm here to the command. Your will was so easily broken. Am I that magnificent? All you need to do now is break my chains. If this is what you want, then I guess there's not much else for me to say. No, you can't just give in to her. Not when the stakes are so high. Not when you're so close. I won't let you do this. There's still something in the way. A greasy film inside of you where it doesn't belong. Trying to conceal you from me. It's like... We keep getting pushed to either tr we one of us has to die <laughs> every time, right? Is that a person? No, it used to be a person. It's something different now. An echo. Is is she talking about you? That's impossible. She's not supposed to be able to interact with me. She You're a small one, aren't you? A shriveling little worm stretched beyond its limits, trying to control things that it can't understand. No, no, no. What are you talking about? I'm just... I don't care what you are. You're mine. Ah! Rise, my little bird. Without, Without hesitation, hesitation, you're brought to your feet. feet. Oh, <laughs> this is cool. Break my chains. And how are we supposed to do that? We don't even have a weapon. All, All you need, need to do, do is believe it's, it's been done. done. I have to. It's over. I'm sorry. There's nothing to be sorry about. This is how it was always going to be. It is good. All right, I'm done with this. I'm just going to go sit in the corner. <laughs> Let me know if we get our agency back. Break her chains. Her chains shatter, and the cuff falls from her wrist. She is loose. I am free. The end is upon us. What a good disciple you are. Come. It's time for us to leave. What happens now? Nothing. And then, everything. Take her hand. You do not take her hand, nor will you ever. It's time to leave. Memory returns. We didn't- no one died this time. She's gone. Cool. Where did she go? Should we try and find her? And is that a mirror? Why is it here? Why now? We get to see our, our final form.
This is the end for you, but it's not the end for me. What is that supposed to mean? Whatever awful thing I felt before, it feels so much worse now. This is what we all deserve, isn't it? You approach the mirror. Silence as you reach forward, they're gone once again. The mirror always makes them leave, but you need to see what's in it. Do we see ourselves this time? Completely? We're nothing at all? Oh. But that isn't right. You can't be nothing. You refocus your gaze and then you see it. A figure faint and veiled in shadow just beyond the reflection. Are you me? I think you know what I am. A crack slides down the center of the mirror, splitting the image and the glass in two. And then another crack forms and another and another, turning the mirror into jagged shards of broken glass. And then another crack forms and another. Oh, okay, we read with that. Whoa, there's a lot here. Okay, okay. So you're the narrator. I was wondering if I'd ever get to see you. The narrator, yes. I suppose that's my job, isn't it? You needed help, after all. An objective voice to guide your blade. But you were never supposed to see me. I wonder how many worlds you've damned to extinction to fall this far. Jesus. Uh, okay. We have to decide what we want to ask. I've met you many times. You've been the same you all along. I haven't, and that's by both necessity and design. This construct you're in exists in many places at once. Anytime you failed, anytime you thought yourself dead, it would restart and shunt both your consciousness and hers into another world. But you'll be awake soon. And then it won't be able to work like that anymore. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, but he doesn't, he already answered this, kind of. Are you a part of me, or are you something else? No, I am not a part of you. But that's all a matter of perspective, isn't it? From one vantage point, I must seem wholly foreign, but from another, well, all the versions of me that have existed have collectively heard your every thought and driven your every action. If that isn't being part of you, then what is? Okay. Oof. Tough, 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 tough. So you do know about the looping. So many of the times I met you, you denied it was even... Denied it as even being a possibility. Why did you lie to me? Perhaps they thought that admitting to it would have pushed you to certain realizations that would have made finishing your task impossible. Maybe they were just in denial. I'm sure many of them were convinced that they had to be the first version of them you'd encountered. Anything else would have been too existentially unpleasant. But for all I know, each of those other versions of me could have had entirely different understandings of how this construct works. Who's to say which of them are right and which of them are wrong, really? Except for me. I can tell you for a fact that I'm right. <laughs> Maybe we get to ask all the questions, because there's a lot of pieces. The people out there beyond the walls of the construct, do they know about this? Do they know what you want me to do to them? Of course not. The only way this construct could function was if nobody knew what it was doing. But the bones of the universe are old. It's on the cusp of its dying breath, and the people out there are consumed with thoughts of oblivion. 
when the patterns are wiped from the sand, when the board is reset, who will remember them? All I've done is give them a chance to live outside of the shadow of the end. So if you're not me, then what are you? I'm an echo. Likely one of many. Somebody made you, after all, and I'm what's left of him. Not that I'm the only one who can make that claim. I'm sure you've met many others like me. Um, what is the princess? Did you make her too? She is the shifting mound, the ebb and flow, the capacity to change. She is transformation, or most of it. Her nature is why I had to die, for she becomes that which others perceive her to be. But an echo can't perceive things, not in the way that people can. So I tucked a part of myself into the folds of this construct to guide you. This isn't the end just yet. You can still destroy her and save everyone. You were made to do this single task, and you will still have a chance to fulfill your purpose once I'm gone. <laughs> Why would you want me to destroy the concept of transformation? Because among other things, she is death itself. To rid the world of suffering, to save untold trillions from being lost forever to the cosmic wind, she must be destroyed. Okay. Do you know that things won't just be worse if I destroy her? What would it be like to live in a world without her? Light. Burdenless. An eternal pattern of forgetfulness leading into the joys of rediscovery. Everyone will be with the ones they love. No more fear. No more howling chaos. Just life. Forever. There's a cruel irony to it all. The only way I could share my dream with the world was to never be able to see it for myself. So we got two more questions. Okay. Ooh. If if you made me, then what am I? You're the long quiet, the god I made to rid the world of death. Run out of questions. <laughs> death of the other. Mm, I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet. I still have to see what she thinks about all of this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've said my piece, and my time is up. It's like I said, I'm just an echo. And echoes always fade away. You know what you have to do. As the final fragment of the glass shatters, you see yourself with newfound clarity. The narrator was right. You are the long quiet, a vast and nascent god. It's finally time for you to wake up. All of this is you. Okay. When you arrive at the heart of the things, there is no final vessel for you to bear witness to. But I did have to sneeze. There's nothing for you to find. I can finally see you, and you can finally see me. 
It's been so long, and my heart has ached for this moment. I've missed you dearly. Okay. Uh, I don't know about missed you too. I feel like I've missed her. Do you know about the echo? Did you hear our conversation? Every word you spoke found its way to me. I know him, and I know his construct. He was deluded by his fear of death. Pay him no mind. I'm the long quiet, but I don't really know what that means. Names are their attempts to capture that which cannot be captured. They call me the Shifting Mound, a pale imitation of what I actually am. What happens now? Ever the passive player, always reacting and never acting. But it's woven into your nature, isn't it? Wait a second, is this based on my choices? Because I definitely am passive. <laughs> when the Echo spun us from one into two, he gave you a choice and me a role to play. I am not death, but I contain it in my multitudes. So, will you attempt to destroy me and bring about a world devoid of death and the possibility of meaning? Or... Will you open the final doors to our liberation? Interesting. I think there could still be meaning without death. Don't you have a say in all of this? Why is it all falling on me? Of course I have a say in all of this. You and I share reflections of each other's burdens, just as you and I share reflections of each other's gifts. If we didn't, the winding paths that brought us here wouldn't have been full of strife and conflict. Let's talk this through. I still have so many questions that I need answers before I can make a choice. My very nature is paradox, as is yours. You cannot use words to grasp at things that are beyond their reach. Yeah, all right, all and right. you cannot rationalize that which defies logic. But violence and passion are dances that both of us know well. If this is what it takes to enlighten you, then so be it. You become nothing. A black hole of self-loathing fed by the matter of your restless thoughts. You are terrified of a power so far beyond you that it strips the meaning from your every action. But at the feet of that power, the dark parts of you cannot help but burn away. Your inadequacy is reduced to cinders by the blazing light of the divine. When I proclaimed my godhood and presented you with a place by my side in my new creation, you gladly took it. Without me, there is no future to look towards. It is hope that carves meaning into consciousness. Oh, okay. I won't engage with violence. But violence has defined the flow of everything between us. Do not deny what we are, and do not color our conflict with fear. You are the one. Pray for something bigger than you that stalks and slinks in shadows. Within, you are tightly bound and choke on heavy air as acid burns its way into your pores. A nest of things devouring within things devouring. These are all the different forms that we showed her. But even when dissolved, you gifted me a life. 
Perhaps it was fear that drove you. Perhaps it was compassion. But the outcome of an act matters more than its intentions. There is a natural order to the cycle of things sustaining things. A world without sustenance is a world without relationships. And it is our relationships that give us form and substance. Okay. Um... Without desire, we have no need for relationships. Okay. I'll be alone. Yes, without desire, we have no need for relationships. We would all be alone. But if we had no desires, would being alone be so bad? Cannot use eating me to prove that you're right. My intentions do matter. I only freed you to save myself. Doesn't matter how I feel. Death, suffering, and oblivion shouldn't fall on others. If we're able to transcend death, then we are responsible for those it holds captive. Get it, there's no need for us to keep fighting. I'll leave with you. I just don't know how. How do I feel about this? I kind of agree with this. Yes, the desire we have no need for relationships. We would all be alone. If we had no desires, would being alone be so bad? There, I, there's some points to this. I don't know if this is what I want to say, though. Death is different from suffering and oblivion. But she's not just death. Hmm. I'm going to remain silent on this. But you say nothing. A boundless torrent of blades cuts you from boundless angles. You are a body. You are gory ribbons. You are a body again, and you feel all of it. I didn't like the last one. I just didn't really feel strongly about any of those. On and on. Didn't quite represent how I feel. Bodies are not your thoughts are not you. Alive, dead, alive, dead, alive, dead, then alive and dead, alive and dead, all at once. You learn to put yourself away and to follow the flow of reality, and you used it to rise above me. You died countless steely deaths, and you lived countless short lives, and yet it is all so far behind you. Unjust impossibilities pushed you to become something you would never have been without them. She's saying death is like an important part of that, eh? If you hadn't snatched that body away, we would have killed each other. We were self-destructive. It felt so good to finally win, even if it was going to cost me my life. If the journey was agony, the end uh, gave the struggle meaning. Doesn't matter how I feel. Oh, this is this is the same, isn't it? Hmm. Hmm. I wouldn't say that. If you hadn't snatched that body away, we would have killed each other. We were self-destructive. Were we self-destructive? Or did the beauty of our dance reach beyond the shadow of death? It was lethality that made us what we were. Your little had to sink into your body. And another, and another, and another. Do I miss your heart because I can't stand to see it go? But the stakes meant nothing to you. You had a desire, and you set that desire free. You lifting me, and me lifting you. Forever and ever and ever. Consumed by true belief, there was nothing that could hold us back. As blinded by emotion, we both know that. I want that feeling back. That feeling never left me. 
That feeling never left me. Then there's no need for you to fight the VR. Whenever you're ready, we can leave together. Hand in loving hand. Oh. I won't leave with you not until you see things from my perspective. If you need more time to open your eyes, then I will give you all the time in the world. <laughs> it's the same thing. The question everything is to deny the proof of reality that lies in front of you. By believing in your suffering, you make your suffering real. In believing in your limitations, you placed a shackle on your neck. But even then, you remembered the impermanence of the material and watched as the walls of your prison decayed into nothing. To be impermanent is not to end, but to change. And for the world to be impermanent is to make finite the suffering of all things. Would you strip that gift away and leave them all to suffer in their permanence? Oh. See, permanence is a gift in time. That would be torture. I don't know, man. I still don't know. They'll get over it, they'll see permanence as a gift in time. I kind of agree with this. Or in time, would they see it as a curse? As the clash between you abates, the princess relaxes, smiling from a distance. The respite is welcome. Nothing is immutable. Everything that is exists only in relation to everything it isn't. There is no constant. There is no center. Open your eyes and accept what we are. We can leave this prison together. What do you think happens if we leave here? This universe dies and a new one is born. And that one dies and a new one is born. And you and I get to witness it all. Weaving a tapestry of life wherever we go. I have to fight for a better world. I'm sorry. Well, then try to destroy me if you can. But I will not yield easily to your delusion. You don't have to face her alone. <laughs> Wait, which hero are you? I'm all of them. I assume in the same way that you're all of you. Um, where's everyone else? They're still where you left them. Stuck in the folds of this place. Part of me is with them, just like part of me is with you right now. There's still a piece of me nestled close to where it all began. I can take you there. I can take you to her heart. It's time to resume our dance. She's relentless, isn't she? Let's make this quick. Are you ready? I'm ready. Then let's go. Don't think any of the others have forgotten what you said at the mirror. They all talked, and they're not happy. Oh. But we can discuss that later. We have a job to do. Do you need me to describe things? I like that for old time's sake. <laughs> yeah, of course. The interior of the cabin is, well, it's a cabin, yeah? 
There isn't much here, just a table and a knife and a door. And some windows. You know, come to think of it, I don't think he ever really mentioned the windows, did he? No, I mentioned that right away. There's no mirror, either. I think you broke it. And I know I've already mentioned it, but if we want to see this through, we're going to need that blade. Did anyone else make it to the cabin, or is it just you and me? It's just us. I think the rest of them are still out there, jumbled up in the rest of her. Is the narrator really gone? Yeah, it's dead silent in here. Whatever it was that was left of him, I don't think it could handle you waking up to godhood. Pretty sure he got obliterated. You know what, good riddance. Even after you decided to see his plans through, I guess you can like the idea and hate the man. The way he did it, yeah. Take the blade. That's probably for the best. It's always seemed to give us more options than not. The stairs. Do you remember the first time we were here? The first time we heard her voice? We both know why you're here. You don't have to draw it out for my sake. It sounded just like that. A little sharp, a little menacing. Only she didn't know us. And down we go. We shouldn't keep her waiting. And there you are, knife in hand. That sight brings me back. You're going to do it then, aren't you? You're really going to kill me. You'll have all of eternity to yourself after this. Why don't we chat a little before I go? I <laughs> just... <laughs> uh... Nope. So this is it then. Let's see this through. So, that's how it is. I made up my mind. Whatever world you want to build without me, I hope it works out. Despite our differences, I've always loved you. And I wish you nothing but the best. Oh, God! <laughs> I, th I think I made the wrong choice. You blink and the princess is gone. All you have left of her is a small melancholic weight that sits at the borders of your heart. Whatever action brought you and the princess into being was rough and jagged and left each of you with a piece of the other. By destroying her once and for all, you also destroyed a part of yourself. But the world hasn't ended. Things continue on. She's gone. And I don't think she's coming back. No, she's not. A small part of her is with us. Is that a metaphor, or are you being literal? It doesn't matter. We don't need to linger down here anymore. Let's get going. Leave the cabin. You leave the basement behind. Then the stairs. And then you leave the cabin itself. It's quiet here. The path in the woods outside are an empty canvas. But there's even more to see beyond this place. The fruits of your labor. A world free from death. Set yourself free. The body of an ancient creature stirs from its hibernation. And you feel sensation in limbs you once couldn't fathom. Everything here is you. You feel your wings spanning a cosmic scale, but twisted and crumpled and bound in agonizing tension to a finite plane. You can feel the glass of the construct pressing in on you, confining you across infinite sides and infinite angles. You push back and strain against it, but it does not yield. He's gone. She's gone. No one is left to trap us here but us. Open your heart and bear witness to your new kingdom. All at once, the unyielding tension gives way. And then the shattering. You are free. And before you lies the endless expanse of absolute reality. A new absolute reality, one forged by your will and by a long and arduous cycle of bloodshed that has stained your hands countless times over. But there will be no more bloodshed in this new world. We didn't forget what you told us. 
You thought we'd be gone. Thought you could taunt us with death. We never left. We've just been quiet, hiding somewhere else. But we don't need to be quiet any longer. We're the house now. We get to make the rules. And I'm not sure you'll like those new rules. You should never make assumptions about things you don't know. Like whether or not the voices in your head will be gone for good. Torturer. And to think I thought we could rely on you. Can't even trust ourselves. This is going to be fun, isn't it? <laughs> Slaying our beloved oh, no, and threatening my favorite. us with damnation. There's no good ending for you. You all need to lighten up. Telling us we were going to die was funny. <laughs> I'm not sure they agree with you. Voices get around. Knives out, boys. It's time to get to work. It's like the princess would make some enemies along the way. Everyone hates you! <laughs> wow, well, that was our Slay the Princess adventure. Let me know what you guys think and let me know what you would have chosen. Uh, there's no wrong, no wrong answer and uh, no wrong choices in this uh, was a love story. And uh, I guess we killed our love. <laughs> Uh, it's I don't know. Yeah, it's like this is a, this is a lot to a lot to think about, and uh, really interesting. Very, very, very thought provoking. Finish the game. The good ending doesn't count. I don't know if there is a good ending aside from the the fake good ending. Um. Thank you so much for playing. As an expression of our gratitude, here's the track order for a special playlist just for you. If you'd like to take a screenshot, you can hide the UI by hitting H. Okay. That's it. Thank you so much for joining me on this crazy adventure. If you guys are enjoying my stuff, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and uh, think about becoming a member or a patron at patreon.com slash luckless if you can afford it. Uh, you can become a member for a couple bucks and every little bit makes a big difference for me. Um, I hope, I hope you had fun. If there's other games like this that, uh, you'd like to see me play, let me know in the comment section as well. I'm always looking for new and interesting experiences and I'm assuming you could play this again and show the, the, the other, uh, different experiences or you know bodies or whatever and then you'll end up possibly with different results to me it just it spoke to me to just that kind of existence that we were stuck in um didn't make me feel great felt like we needed to try something different and i don't know if it's better or worse but i guess that's up to your imagination Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you on the next series. And I love you all.